What's yeah. going on, comic friends? It's Ryan the Colossus Collector, and I hereby call this uh, first inaugural meeting of the Council of X in session. Nice. Welcome, session. everybody. Um, just want to uh, go around the horn and just uh, introduce everybody uh, who's who's with us tonight. We've got Mike from Lunch Money Comics. We've got Eric from SideQuest Comics. Travis from Comics Unlimited or Comics Limited. Uh, Dan from Dan's X-Men Comics on IG. We've got Chris from Cheddar Comics. Uh, and Brian Bigby McFly, the comic guy here on YouTube, and myself, Ryan the Colossus Collector. What's going on, guys? Thanks for uh, for coming to hang out tonight. Honor. You have the dopest YouTube comic book opening of all time for this Council of X. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. Yes, epic. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Got my wife, right and she doesn't even like comics. <laughs> it turned out pretty good. I mean, I, I, I. I won't. Uh, I won't toot my horn too much. It's it's a it's a template, right? So uh, uh, it's not like I just put that all together. It's what you put thing. in it. Don't count yourself down, right? Well, I, I put it. I put it, it together. Yeah, but uh, I'm. Uh, I like I'm the no, music. I'm no means of like a, a super editor graphics motion graphics guy. So, uh, but I did make the logo. Yeah, there you go. It got me all unnecessarily right. hyped up for this. Like I was yeah, like, I'm all hyped. I was like shadowboxing yeah. those on. <laughs> Well, that's that was the point. I wanted to I wanted to get people excited about it. Uh, all right. Well, we've got uh, one person in the chat, so I'm gonna just say what's up to Richard Westfall. Up, Richard. Thank you for, hey, Rich. uh, for stopping hey, in into the council's first meeting. We've also got Flow Wolf Comics as well. Thank you for uh, tuning in tonight, and I'm sure we'll have more trickle in through uh, the rest of the evening. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of oh here we got one more we got Casino Comics, what so up? Casino, thanks for stopping in. And uh, so, anyways, I just wanted to kind of mention that. Uh, so the the idea for this is uh, is that on my channel I have another ongoing episodic show called X Men Collector Chat with my co host uh, Dan's X-Men comics over on the other side there. And, uh, we have been having live streams with fellow X-Men collectors, all of which you're seeing around me here. Uh, and, uh, the idea just kind of came out that, uh, you know, we should do this more often. We should hang out and talk X-Men and nerd out on, 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 uh, this mutant world that we love. And, uh, so I, you know, I jumped on that. I wanted it to uh, be this new thing that we do on the channel and do it like in sort of a, a uh, an order, a schedule. So we're doing this every other week, uh, either on Mondays or Fridays, kind of keeping it uh, flexible in terms of the day, just so that we can accommodate different people's availability and uh, just kind of test to see what nights work best. But uh, the idea is that anybody who comes on an X-Men collector chat, uh, is automatically given membership to this illustrious council of X-Men fans and is welcome to join us uh, every time we have a council meeting. So we're, we're, right now we're missing one uh, of our members, uh, Josh from Sasquatch Comics. He might come a little bit later. We're hoping he can make it, but... Uh, we're at we're at eight right now, and hoping to add more as uh, as months and weeks go by uh, this year. So, if you uh, you know want to come on the channel, talk X Men, uh, let myself or Dan know, and we'll 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 try and set the application like form. And we're you know the more we, ha we have and... we, the more we have members to the council, the more we'll have uh, you know like a, a big panel every uh, every other week. Uh, not expecting the same people to always be able to make it all the time or to be a full a full council um, meeting but uh, the more we have the more likely we can just always make sure that we're, we're doing this every other week and uh, keep it running for a good long time so uh, and, the other days call them like danger room session or something <laughs> sorry what was that I, I said you have to call the other days like like the Friday is Council of Acts and the other one is Danger Room Sessions. Danger Room Sessions. <laughs> I like it. I like it. That sounds like too much like working out. 
maybe danger <laughs> are like like it's like trivia or like some kind of challenge of some kind. There you go. That'd be cool. Yeah, like, people who want to join the council have to have to show their mutant powers too, right? I, 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 I would fail if I had to do, jump yeah, through those. I'm, kind of <laughs> I'm not making anybody else do that. Nice. And, and, and I will add too, like the nice thing about uh, this group and what it could still continue to grow into is we have all kinds of X Men fans and collectors here, right? We've got people like me who have only been uh, reading for a few years and. I'm just sort of, you know, learning all the stories more. But I've been a lifelong X Men fan for. Hey, baby, what's up? Stuff, and then uh, also, you know, we've got lifelong readers. People collect. People who read. Uh, so no, it's fine. It's they can see it. Hey, hey, Trav, you're, Trav, you're not, not on mute. Fine. Oh, I'm not on mute. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> no worries, man. No worries. <laughs> Got to do that. Trying to figure out why you were calling uh, Ryan baby, but that's okay. More awkward. I'm the one on the other call. Sorry. <laughs> hey, baby, what's up? Hey, baby. Uh, well, I, have this mute button. I have this mute button right here on the front of my microphone, and I thought I hit it, and that's why I... Uh, the joys well. of live television. Yeah, right? Sorry, we heard everything. No worries, no worries. I uh, just want to say hi to a few more people. We've got uh, Next Gen Collector. Thanks for watching tonight. Jose Gutierrez, thanks for coming in. TJ, a regular on the channel. Thank you for stopping in, TJ. Uh, we've also got ah yes, no good comics. Thanks for stopping in, yeah, my friend. Me. We've got uh, Jen B. Thanks for watching tonight. Digger right. Jim, seven twenty. Thanks for tuning in. And that's that's it. So, um, I had a train of thought that I've lost now, but. Uh, does anybody want to jump in with any topics they want to talk about or something to show? You know, I'm, oh, I, what? Actually, one thing I did want to want to do one thing. Um, so I wanted to kind of always have something prep, just a little something special for uh -oh. our our council meetings. So I want to introduce you to a little segment I'm putting together for our council meetings called Pages of X. Pages of X. Right. Pages of X. Hey everybody, my name is Ricky and I'm from the channel All Sorts of Words. That's the one. My good friend Colossus from the Colossus Collector said, Hey Ricky, can you read X-Men? And I said, I'm a DC fan. And he went, yeah, but you like you like doing fun voices, so would this be fun? And I said yes, because I love him. Well, I hope you enjoy my reading X-Men number one and also Colossus's channel and my channel. Uh, come subscribe. I need, I need the validation. In the main study of an exclusive private school in New York's Westchester County, a strange silent man sits motionless, brooding alone with his indescribable thoughts. Finally, his meditation comes to an end. Then, while he remains completely motionless, a sharp, commanding thought rings out, echoing through the great halls of the building. Attention, X-Men! This is Professor Xavier calling. Repeat, this is Professor X calling. You are ordered to appear at once. Class is now in session. Tardiness will be punished. Never within the memory of man was there a class such as this. Never was there a teacher such as Professor X. And never were there students such as the X-Men. Cyclops present and accounted for, sir. Iceman right on schedule, sir. The angel reporting, sir. The beast is here, sir. And now... Prepare yourself for one of the most exciting reading experiences of your life, for you are about to enter the fascinating, unpredictable world of the X-Men. Nice. <laughs> well, I had the idea. Let's get, every time we do one of these meetings, we get somebody from our community to uh, read a page of X-Men comics. And what better than the very first one, for our first Council of X meeting. So thank you to Ricky from All Sorts of Words. 
Uh, be sure to go and sub that man up. He is hilarious and entertaining, and uh, he's got lots of great content. So uh, thank you once again to Ricky. And, uh, yeah, so what's on the pocket? What are we talking about? Day. I could listen to that all day. Legit. <laughs> I'd pay for that. <laughs> I almost was like Ricky sent me the, the 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 reading and his opening and I'm I was I was thinking oh no I've set the bar too high. <laughs> 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 he like he should have been like the the eleventh guy I I I, uh, I asked. But <laughs> it's all downhill from here. <laughs> oh oh that's, very that's, cool. That's that's, that's cruel. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just saying, Ricky's hard to top. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you, you really can't top him for sure. Yeah, oh, that stuff he did the other night for Brandon at my times. I, I I was crying. I was laughing. Oh, so yeah, hard. we all were. We, we all were. were. <laughs> if you if you're not sure what what we're talking about, Brandon from Mon Comics did a, a a short stream to celebrate his one year on on YouTube. And uh, Ricky couldn't be there, so he did this video thing uh, for for uh, Brandon, and it was absolutely hilarious. Go check that out as well. It's we were we were all crying. It was pretty it was, cool. that was great. Perfect. So I'm kind of curious. I got a question <laughs> opening for us. Uh, a lot of us, a lot of on our channels and stuff, we show off, you know, the chase. These old old X Men we're getting. I'm curious, how many people actually collect the modern stuff, uh, like the Krakoa age, I guess you'd call it? That'd be Travis. Yeah. Well, kind okay. of, some of it. Travis is our big one, for sure. I I Mike, you still read it, right? Mike, no, Mike reads it, but it's a collector. I have a lot of them, yep. They, and they Josh, me and uh, the Sackwash collector, he has literally every X-Men book ever made. Yeah. Like, so talk about a completist, Josh has everything um, yeah, that kind of gets me too where it's like i gotta i gotta get it all of it oh there's a new side series that's four issues that has nothing to do with this one but i still need it that and, and, and eric i i feel like i'm starting to move there but like i'm i'm building to it right like, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta get i gotta get that one to 300 and then like reevaluate where i'm going but like i already i've read part like the good start of the Krakoan era. And I do really want to read it all through. Mm -hmm. um, and There's I do so have, much. I do have some really oh. great, great covers from, from the, that era, this new modern era. But uh, yeah, I, I could see it. I could see it happening. <laughs> and I was reading all that, but what lost me and kind of actually put me off from modern comics. I hate to say it, it not because I didn't like it, it was because of time commitment. There are so many tangential titles I yeah. couldn't keep up. And I was literally, yeah. I had, before Lunch Money Comics started, I had, it was because of the X-Men, the Hickman run, I had piles of modern comics I just could never get to. Yeah, I, I, I have one like, right behind me, Mike, like that. I just, yeah. it's too much. Yeah. and It's too much. And I was spending all this money on these books that I couldn't even get to. So I ended up choosing like one or two X-Men titles. And I just said, I'll have to fill in the blanks reading online, figure out what's going on. You know what I mean? Um, that's how they get you. You know, like that's why yeah. in the beginning of every book, they show you the order you need to read them. And if you ever looked at those, I mean, oh. you need to collect 10 different comics <laughs> to yeah. get the whole story. So. And then on top of that, if you're, I know Travis, you're like this, they have about five different covers that are gorgeous. So it's like, well, I only need one to read, but I need these other <laughs> four just to look at. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of that just in general with modern comics. Like there's too many variants, but we don't have to get into that topic tonight. But, um, I, I get what you're saying too, Mike, because um, when I started reading the Krakoan era, like it starts with um, House and Powers, right? But then yeah. it splits off into X Men, Excalibur, X Force, uh, Marauders, it, oh, New Mutants. Like it was, it was crazy. And I'm reading it through Marvel Unlimited, which is a little bit more manageable, but. Mm -hmm. um, even I was like, this is going to take forever to read through Right. if I have to read every title. And it felt like at, at the beginning, it really did feel like you needed that because there was just, <sighs> everything was just so intertwined and connected. Um, I'm wondering if that continued all the way through up until now. Oh, yeah. Like, 
Yeah, it's still much. like you it can't like, just, kinda, um, just gonna read X Men and, and know what's going on. It's kind of nice. That there's only been like, two or three books a week right now for X, so it's like I get a breather. <laughs> you know, right? Slightly better. I actually but I remember dropped, back in the day, like the pull list was stupid. Like I couldn't keep up with the pull list because every week you're getting a call. Like oh my, like, I haven't got to these, and you just keep adding yeah. them to the pile. Uh, I think Immortal X Men is where I dropped off. I really like that series because it dealt with some of the bigger X Men characters. You know, a lot about Mister Sinister and stuff. It was very cool. Yeah. And I remember thinking, I really like the series, but I have to stop reading because I, if I don't stop now, I'll never stop. So well, I started that's... dropping the limited series, the four and five issue series, just because it was too much money wise. It was getting to be too much. Yeah. I, I, you know what? It's really funny, Mike. It, the that is exactly the same time I dropped right there for, and I, and I dropped literally everything except for Wolverine. And I just said, you know what? I've been collecting yeah, Wolverine for so again. long. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep Wolverine. So Wolverine's the one I kept. And then there was a couple titles that had Nightcrawler in them, and so Nightcrawler was the one I kind of. And because Claremont well, and Jose and then, in the comments brought it up, Uncanny Spider Man. I had to start back up as a Nightcrawler fan, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jose, actually, I, I liked it, but I was more excited about it because I knew, I knew since 2003 they were going to retcon Nightcrawler's <laughs> origin. I was waiting for them to do it. So I was happy to read that X Men Blue number one and be like, good, it's done. I've read that, those issues and I was done with it. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're still leaving that one in the garbage can, though, right, Mike? I took it out. I can't throw it. Oh, out. you guys know this? <laughs> no, I had took it out. No, I have, I have three boxes of comics that are new stuff that I haven't even touched yet, and there are, and that's like stuff that I got on my pull list that I was, and these are individual issues, not the variants and the comics. It's just because of school and everything, I I got so far behind. I cleaned my pull list out uh, last week when, with my uh, with at my LCS, so that was fun and interesting. So Travis, like related to like you, you have a big pull list. I'm curious. You know, it seems it's always the trend, and it's always. I feel I feel that this is always the truth that all collectors end up wanting to downsize. We all want the quality over quantity. You know, so I'm just curious. You gotta zig while other people are zagging. Should we be picking up uh, quantity now? Should we be who or who actually does focus on like I don't want the quality. I do want the quantity. At what point do we switch to that point, or are we all kidding ourselves? Well, I think I think what we're, we're I think right now the one thing that's keeping things alive, right. For the, other than the fact, um, you know, I, I, I don't know who said it, but someone said it last week and it was really amazing. It was a great point. It was Ricky actually speaking of Ricky, Ricky made this point uh, that, right. that the, uh, that the independent comics right now are what are keeping because they're so good are keeping the regular comics alive. Right. And, and because they're still out there putting out good work, people are still going and buying their amazing Spider-Man. But, you know, I mean, I, I'm kicking myself right now. I still haven't read Ultimate Spider-Man because I'm still wait, I've still got to finish Ultimate Universe or Ultimate Invasion and Ultimate Universe. Those are the three. I want to read all those books before I pick up, before I read the Ultimate Spider-Man book. Um, but, but with how it's so crazy... I mean, you know, you could say yes. I could say yes. Books like Ultimate Spider-Man, Jonathan Hickman, he picks a, a, a he would be a person, a, a writer that you could pretty much guarantee if you picked up his quantity, you're going to get, you're going to, but again, it's quality and the quantity that make it so, so such a draw. I mean, it goes back to why I got back into X-Men. Well, I wasn't out of X-Men actually at that point in time, but I was super excited. In fact, I was on a re on a Reddit thread and they were talking about Hickman. What is he going to do next? And two years before he picked up X-Men, everybody thought he was going to go to DC. And I said, no, Marvel's going to offer him X-Men and he's going to go with X-Men. And I, could, I, I, I still have that Reddit post. I should find it so I could show it. But I posted it and everybody was like, nope, you're wrong. You're wrong. He's not going to do it. And you're wrong. And sure enough, he went to X-Men. I, I just... It, he just didn't feel like he was done with Marvel when he let, when he finished uh, Secret Wars. It just felt like he was still had a had a, 
a thing to go on because you know he then he did that short little shield run thing that he did that was set in the the past and across time and i thought you know that it just kind of had this feeling of mutants and x-men feel to it because it just it was so marvel broad right and so i thought here's a that's exactly the type of book that he needs to go to is x-men because marvel's not happy with the direction it's going and Jonathan Hickman comes in and has a five-year plan usually when he comes in to write something. And that's the, that is that they like that because, you know, then they can go, okay, this is good. But then, then they did. And that way he can also stuff. leave it. He can leave the title. He doesn't have to re write it for five years, but he could like set it up and then like let people. Know. Yeah. That, that's not saying that it's as that's good as when he, when he did it, but at least, you know what I mean? Like he can. Well, yeah. He got he kind of got run out of that thing. Mm. I don't know if you know that that, no, that he, he yeah he he was not happy with what the what Marvel decided to do and that that kind of that kind of put a sour taste in his mouth. He almost we we almost do not have this Ultimate Universe or Gods or any of the other titles from him in Marvel because he was uh, he was they they did not do him good. They did him dirty, and it mm. was bad. And and he you know that he he has power enough that he can walk away from Marvel tomorrow if he wanted to and and live off of his independent stuff because he's such a he's such a prolific writer. I, so, I know we want to move on to like more classic stuff, but like I, I could ask you, Travis, what was the point where he dropped off? Because there was a change in the story, and I don't want to have spoiler alert for anyone who's reading these. But there was a heel turn by Moira McTaggart. Is a just change? Was that the point yeah. you left? Because it felt like he was that too. Because yeah, it, it seems like a point where this didn't seem like it was scripted in the original part. Right. right? I, it, was, it, it was Immortal X-Men. It was that, that issue in Immortal X-Men yeah. where, where we get where that where all that stuff with Destiny comes. Sorry. That was the spoiler you were avoiding. I could feel it. I could feel that was a change. Yeah. Oh, this doesn't this one of these things is not like yeah. the other. It changed. Yeah. And that, right. well, that's what it was. You can see I, when you can see when it came became dunk when it became Dugan's story. And I don't have anything against Dugan. Dugan's a great writer. Um, so I, I, I just, I, it, it, you could just see, you could feel the change from yeah. the original idea and concept. Well, you know, actually, you know what the original, the, where it really changed for me was in X of Swords. That's that story in X of Swords. There was the where where it got really Avalon heavy. I was that that totally. I mean that that drained me. I was like that story just doesn't. It was, it just it was a little bloated. Is how I felt. Yeah, I mean, I was looking for you know seven issues of them bat, uh, of mutant versus mutant at attack with swords, and I thought that was going to be like the kick butt type thing, and and we didn't get that, and and I was like, this is not what we were told we were getting, and then it just ew. and then I mean, I guess that speaks to the issue we all have. It's one thing to have multiple titles, but when they're branching off in wildly different directions. And you don't have a cohesive story anymore. It's gonna it's gonna be hard for people to follow in general. Richard Westfall had that great comment a little while ago. How do new collectors yeah. start when there is right? Mm -hmm. I, people ask me. I don't know if you guys get this on your channels. I get that question all the time. Hey, I want to get into comics. Where do I start? I honestly don't know how to answer that question because now on modern comics, I think it's too complicated. Unless you just pick one single title and kind of branch off from there. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Which is why I think to answer Dan's. See how I did this? It come full circle. I'm listening to everyone. Dan brought up, when do people start saying too much, too much? When to consolidate your collection? For me, it's, what do I really like? I said, I don't want to spend money on modern comics. I'm going back to my roots, yeah. the 80s, the 90s comics, things that make me happy. I think that's actually the choice. It's not volume, you know, quality over quantity or whatever. I think it's really, I want to go back to what makes me happy and what I'm comfortable with, I think is the decision that people make. And I think for a lot of us, the older guys, I think that we go back to revert to the fetal position of when we were kids and, and, I, and I want to add to that too because it's it's the same for me like when the reason why i got out of comics when i was a kid was because of those crossovers and i don't understand who the characters are so going back to that you know when chris claremont started the story that was where i was like okay we can start from the beginning and i can follow this um and depending on you know how, how much you're reading um you know eventually you can uh, you can branch off from there, I suppose, right? <laughs> right. I will say though, like crossovers are pretty awesome too. If you're if you're a big fan of the universe, right? So like, I, you don't want to lose crossovers, but it it would be good if you could 
not right your your confuse people you know with the with the with the main story more meaningful back in the day where you waited you know and like it was a big yeah. deal when the Avengers and the x-men crossed over but now like the Avengers and the x-men mingle like there's always a crossover so it, does, it yeah. lost a little bit of its luster for me like uh, yeah. it's not surprising to see anyone show up in anyone else's book so go back to your question about where to jump on like i was i i, I piped up in the chat but youtube has some great like read throughs mm -hmm. of current storylines and so you can kind of get caught up to date without any financial investment and mm -hmm. kind of see what you like of what's going on with Spider-Man or what's going on with X-Men or Thor or, you know, the Avengers. And also, like you guys were talking about all the crossovers, a lot of times when they're doing the read through, they'll weave in all the crossovers. Right. And some of those things make no sense with the crossover. It's like, yeah. I'm watching it. I'm like, this storyline has nothing to do with this crossover, right. but they're, but they're, you know, they're kind of like required to put it in with the read through, but it's like, this is baloney. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, Honestly, if you if you want to get in with that, no financial investment, even that happens back in the day. Like I I got the I got the omnibus right, and I got like Inferno omnibus or Mutant right. Mask omnibus, oh, and they oh. stuff all these other issues in that are like adjacent, like stories flying around. But some of them are like you don't need to read them; they're there. It's good that they put them in, but like you don't. I mean, they kind of wanted to keep the continuity of the universe, though. So they wanted to say, like, "Hey, you know, Inferno is happening. This is how it affected Daredevil. Or this yeah. is how it affected Spider Man. Like, well, Spider Man got a new a new villain out of it, right? Did he get D Demo Goblin or whatever out of well, Inferno. In some cases, in some cases, it made sense. Like, like Thor, uh, in in the Mutant Massacre, when Angel gets harpooned to the to the wall in the in the sewer and he loses his wings and or he get his wings yeah, yeah. damage thor is actually the one who like like rescues him right so like that right, right. Really makes a lot of sense as part of the overall story right but then there's other ones where it's just like oh you know like daredevil's fighting a demon over here during inferno it's like i don't really need to i don't need that yeah, i mean I, I understand why they did it they wanted to keep a, a continuity as a whole of the storyline of like yeah. this is going on so it should affect everybody in the marvel universe it, which, which, I don't, which i appreciate i appreciate that like if if all these heroes are in new york city and the and the entire new york cityscape turns into like limbo hellscape it should it should impact spider-man daredevil and things like that right so right right exactly right. But you don't necessarily need that shoehorned into your no. X-Men trade paperback or your omnibus. And X-Men is an – oh, go ahead, Mike. It doesn't affect the story. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, it's it's a fun little footnote. But if it doesn't affect the main story, as far as you're concerned, it doesn't need to be in there. You know, I prefer them, like, almost, like, appendix it. Like, if yeah. you can put it in the books, but, like, put it in a, a clear spot that's organized as – you know, adjacent stories or things like that, so that if you don't want to yeah. read it, not that it's like part of literally the order, and you end up reading it and it's like, why did why did I have to read this? You know, yeah, they can put like a little editor's note, like editor's note. If you want to see how this affected Daredevil, check out this issue number, and yeah. don't don't yeah. even yeah. include it in the in the um in the yeah. in the. And I feel that's something that's changed in the last, like, even like 10, 15 years. So even like think about the crossovers, like Avengers versus X Men. What was that? Mid two thousands, right? Um, even that one, Marvel even said, this is the main story. If you want to have a little bit extra, read these. They didn't even say it was necessary reading. You had all those, like, you could just see the one-on-one -on -one fights. Like, yeah, I just want to see Gambit it. fight Captain America. Great. Simple. Yeah, as shown in, in Hulk yeah. issue this. Or yeah, and in the comic, yeah. it would say, hey, if you want to see this fight, how it played out. Read it. Like, I like that because it's not required reading. When did that change? Because I feel like they consider everything required reading now. I don't well, know they want every required. dollar out of you. 2015. I'm just guessing. This brings up a very important point. I mean, it's a it's a printing, it's a money printing machine, oh and you know, well, yeah, you know, there is one part about this that's different, right? So Marvel had a different way of doing uh, crossovers than DC, and if you look at the DC model, they included everything, like every title, and it's in the list, and you have to read all these different titles to get the whole crossover to understand everything that's going on. Well, understand, right? And that is in the list, right? So, like, it, like this, this whole um, uh, dark, uh, dark crisis that came out just at the beginning of last year. Um, you know, great story in and of itself, but the 
added storyline stuff. Like there was this Flash storyline that was like required reading, and it's like I'm start, I started going down the road of the Flash storyline. It was okay, but I'm like. This is not me. This is not something I care about. Why am I reading this? And I'm like, yeah. I'm just going to go back and read, you know, the regular story and read those books and then see if I can suss out what I need. And how many issues totally do good. you need to read into until you are, yeah. you know, give it a I mean, fair chance? This is why I prefer like one shots or mini series because you know there's a starting and an end. They're going to yeah. tell the story. They have it planned out. Um, it's fun. Like that's yeah. the point, right? It's a fun read. Yeah, I was, I was, I would, I would have to say that it was, that was the one thing. And, you know, it's like, I, I'm glad I didn't waste the money. I'm glad I have other means to be able to read a lot of comics. Um, and, uh, and, and so it was a, it was, I was able to go, okay, yeah, this is unnecessary. I don't need to read this. But it, but now that's kind of trend because a lot of writers have transferred from between companies. That's kind of how those writers that came that you know specifically the writers that we that came into the X titles they were all DC writers and they still are DC writers for that matter several of them and they came they came over and that's how they treated that whole X crossover stuff and that X of Swords storyline which was what bloated everything up and they had all these different people who had their own idea rather than staying sticking towards the and it, it really felt like it really felt like the editors at Marvel have kind of lost control. And that's kind of how I look at it. That's in my opinion. Just going back also, though, to Richard's um, question, and I'm by no means an expert. Like I said, I'm not reading it currently. But I do have an idea that with this new Fall of X storyline, they are kind of wrapping this era up, right? That's the mm -hmm. – that's – the goal and so i think there will be a new jumping on point that'll be kind of relatively easy coming up i don't know in the next year or whatever whenever they they finish this right that um i don't know where it's gonna go i don't know if they're like gonna reset or um it'll they'll just end up back at the mansion or something who knows but a lot uh, of people are fearing that actually they don't want to go back because there's been so much development in the last five years of certain characters um that to like basically erase all that is almost like a disservice to all the people that bought the books and, you know, the writers and the artists that, you know, developed this whole new little world in the X-Men. So who knows? I actually think that's real quick. That's one of the reasons why Hickman's run worked because it started without any pre concept whatsoever. You just thrust into it. What's the word I'm looking for? Latin in medias rest, right in the middle of, we didn't yeah. really know what was going on. And, and actually at first I hated it. I'm like, what? If I missed a lot of things, but I actually think to everyone's point, like that's a great jumping off point, but it didn't take long for them to go from two titles to a million. So I guess that's it. Right. Exactly. It's exploded. So you're right, Ryan, you know, like it may very well be after the fall of X, we're back to square one. Great. That might be a good time, but you know, it's a matter of time before we have 10 titles branching off, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd be curious to see where they go with it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Marvel, it may be a big giant machine right now, but they are, they're financially hurting. I mean, they're a part of the the Disney machine, and that Disney machine is not doing well right now either. I'm I'm just kind of skimmed through this. That you know, it looks to me if they are still following the outline of Hickman. If you remember Powers of X, it goes all the way into ten thousand years from now, right? And it looks like the rise of Powers of X is that where we're going. The fall of House of X and the rise of Power of X. So if we're really truly going to go to new mutants that are different, that's where it's going to be a jumping off point. I think it would be probably set in a nearer future and not necessarily following the Marvel timeline. It might be completely outside of its own self. So, I mean, that that's a possibility, right? And of course... I still have not read these two books that I showed. I am <laughs> they are right here waiting for me to read. Um, uh, I'd be curious to find out though, you know, Eric, you, you mentioned that fans don't want to go back, but I wonder if there if that's like if there's like a faction that does want to kind of at least go back to like the roots in some way. I, I I think we might go back to the roots, but just not technically the mansion. We may see like different little mutant groups, um, you know, setting up around the world and kind of doing what they did in the past and training these mutants to, 
survive in the world that hates them. So we may go back to that roots, but there'll be like little, little, you know, factions here and there and stuff. So we'll see. Only time can tell, really. Stay tuned. Blue team, blue team, guys. Bring it back. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yellow, blue, yellow, blue, and red now, right? And black. There's yellow, blue, and green. Is there a green team? Oh, yeah, there is a green team, too. Yeah. Just have the whole spectrum. Fine. <laughs> Thanks, Nate Gray. We really appreciate you. <laughs> well, I, I assume, I assume you were time. reading that during that that period of time too. When they that is true, the, right? The, like, the there's they're bringing back the Ultimate Universe as well. Maybe maybe that's a way to like do both. You know? Yeah. So, well, I know that there's going to be an Ultimate X Men. I think I saw it in the most recent. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So maybe Ultimate X Men kind of goes back to the roots, and then like the. the 616 kind of just continues the Krakoa. I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah, I, I kind of, I, I love, I, I still like this idea of a Knicks nation. I thought that was a really good idea when they did it in the early 2000s with, uh, and then the Hope storyline was really good. I enjoyed that storyline too. Yeah. Um, because I really felt like it gave us something. It kind of also uh, kind of took Bishop's story and kind of, you know, grew his story out, and that I that I I appreciated that so much more because Bishop always felt like a kind of an add-on character to me, who didn't really have a backstory. He just had this kind of nebulous idea of a semi near future uh, thing where he was kind of mixed with uh, Rachel Gray, but not. I don't know. It just was one of those storylines you could never really you could never really pin down. But I thought the I thought that whole um, mutant messiah storyline was was solid, and I felt I like, like that, that one really kind of. Uh, yeah, I, I just liked Bishop versus you know versus Cable and that back and forth and how it ended up, and then you know and then the X Force storyline where Bishop is a part of X Force, and I thought that was really a cool storyline as well. So, and I I, I loved I love I love. Uh, I think Cope is one of my was one, one of the best new X Men creations in the last twenty years, with no doubt. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was skeptical at first, you know, but then she grew into her own character. She's cool. She's badass. She's great. So I like it every time she's in, uh, in any comic. So, mm-hmm. yeah, there was a weird that weird storyline X Force storyline where she was where she was a robot for a little while, that little mutant robot thing. I missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was a paint. It was actually kind of like had these really uh, um, awesome painted covers, and Cable was the main was the main protagonist in the story. But Hope kind of kept touching other mutants and getting their powers, and it was absorbing their powers and becoming more and more different and unique. And she ended up with being becoming this mutant hologram floaty thing at, by the end of it, which was fun. Um, super interesting. Super interesting, Travis. But, but <laughs> I think Richard brings a great. I was segmented just going to uh, because go because I think we did a great cover of the modern stuff, which I know nothing about. So I thank you all for filling me in on that. <laughs> and now, <laughs> Richard, send us your agenda for the rest of this Council of X. Yeah, I'm prepared. prepared. He's our, uh, yeah, he's our, uh, what, uh, I forget the word. What are those? He's steering this ship. <laughs> what are those debate guys that, like, see? Uh, moderator. Moderator. He's a moderator. <laughs> there we go. I can't think of words. <laughs> hey, Brandon's one. All right. <laughs> All right. No, but, like, seriously. Brandon. Brandon. The nerdiest Man. legends. What's <laughs> the legends in the chat tonight, I'll tell you. Yeah, well, that. I'll start. I'll just start on this one real quick because I've actually yeah. changed my mind in the last like two months on this one. Oh, um, I'm curious. I don't like the Fox version of X Men. <clears throat> I never have. I don't like them. I don't think that the X Men, like on, on none of none of the cases we've seen, even the best iterations of the X Men, I do not like them. Again, when you have something really I, close to your heart, guys, it takes. I a like lot. them, but I agree I, with what you're saying. Yeah, I, I mean, what about I, Deadpool? I, He's not an X-Men. Come on. All right. Now, <laughs> Deadpool's the only <laughs> one. X adjacent. lots of X-adjacent. okay ones, but they're never like 100% like, yes, absolutely. So I was all for them recast everybody. 
fresh new. I've kind of changed my mind on that. Um, be only because like there is so much precedent set up. It would take so long for them to set up new X Men. I kind of like what they're doing now, where it's bits and pieces, slow transition. I'm actually on board. I don't think it's pull the bandit off new X Men. I kind of like the fact Hugh Jackman. I always said great actor. Love Hugh Jackman. He's not Wolverine to me. Starting to change my mind. I'm starting to think you keep Hugh Jackman in it until he is in a wheelchair. You could use CG to change <laughs> to put him on anybody. He doesn't have to work out anymore. It just as that transition point, like keep that one stable thing and you can start filling in the rest naturally. Um, and this is based on, I'm not having even seen Deadpool. I kind of like that. That's probably going to be the reset button. Obviously they're going to have so much of the old Fox universe in that whether they kill them off or just hit the harder reset or whatever. I like the idea of the slow transition. Now I think at some point, obviously, obviously we're going to have to say young actors in, like you can't just contract people for 20 years when they're already 50 or 60 years old, they just can't do it. Right. So I think that's like the thought of building around a veteran, like a sports team almost. Correct. But if there was one character you could build around someone who age doesn't really matter, it's Wolverine. Right. So I think that's how you use him. You beat that horse to death, man. I, I, (laughs) I've come around. (laughs) Just keep him on as long as you can. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm kind of in agreement with you. I I still think Harry Potter would make a great Wolverine. <laughs> and honest, no. honestly, no. I, I don't know. Have you seen the images of the, with order, the, the, order, order? <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to make him intimidating. I won't buy it. You chased well, okay. Dan away. No wait, way. wait, wait, wait a Dan, second. Dan, no. Dan's like, yeah, he's like, I'm out. out out of here <laughs> in that movie where he has the guns stapled to his hands and he's running around guns akimbo guns akimbo oh my gosh no talk about no. i thought he was <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sorry i think he could do it i think it'd be great i really like and you know if there was if you're gonna go for an actor that people know i really like taron edgerton yeah that's um, good i think he's got he's Popular short voice. he's short he's kind of got the builds but he can have the intensity yeah you know yeah I don't but, disagree. Who's, I, the, I just, who's the kid from uh, Stranger Things that uh, the badass Billy? They they rumored to cast him as young Wolverine too. Yeah, he's it's somebody a, who he's can have a lot of yeah. legs for a lot I'm of sure years, good, right? Who's I think young? we're gonna get several Wolver- 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 Stranger yeah. Things. The, not the guy who's the, 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 the rock star Ryan, the guy who was the metalhead. Yeah, the that, one that the, all the moms were hot after. He's the new oh, Johnny yeah. Storm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is he? Okay. Eddie is the yeah. new Johnny Storm. Um, oh, he yeah, came there. back. He decided to come back. I, I will <laughs> say this. What stinks, though, guys, is we have a lot of Don't older actors. Yeah, they're gonna have to, they have to cast someone <laughs> younger, right? We all, we all know this. Wolverine is the one you can kind of get away with it. He's a short, ugly guy, right? He's not supposed to be this handsome, <laughs> six-foot-two, amazing singer. Like, it's just, is you know, again... So I've always looked at these, you know, short guys, guy, whatever. Like, but there's actors that are too old. So, like, one of who's my favorite? Uh, Stephen Graham. You guys know who Stephen Graham is? So he played Capone in Boardwalk Empire. He's in everything. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. Graham is like perfect, short guy, grumpy, you know, mean. That's the Wolverine I expect to see. But like, you can't get people. You know, they're not going to cast him like that because it's Hollywood. He's Tommy in Snatch. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, yeah exactly, exactly. So you know, they will never cast an ugly Wolverine ever because they need to sell tickets and they're going to pick someone handsome right it's the same um, reason why thorin oakenshield and the hobbit is handsome that makes no sense he should be a really old dwarf but they're like we can't sell this as a main character unless he's handsome we can't so make know. action figures out of that you can't <laughs> so you know they're gonna pick a taron edgerton or something along those lines they have yeah, yeah. the problem that they had they the problem that the mcu didn't have in the beginning was that they could get hungry actors and sign them up for a 20, 15 picture deal with no details and no scripts and Chris Evans would sign it. But as they transitioned through time and they wanted to get Kate Blanchett, Kate Blanchett's not gonna sign up for 10 movies. She wants to do one and she wants to leave. So then they had to start doing be like, okay, we'll give you a single picture deal. So the higher up you go in the scale, the less movies they wanna do. So if you want Wolverine around for 20 years, you need someone whose calendar is going to be open all the time 
for Marvel to like get their shambles in place and be like, and we need super this. big and expensive. And that's You're, the issue we have with the Fantastic Four. Everyone's like, yeah. oh, great. You know, you get Margot Robbie would be the best Sue Storm. I agree. But there's no way you're going to lock her up for 20 years. No way. A million apiece. Like they're not going to do it. Exactly. Without paying her the cost right. of making all the movies. But, but, but there's also the added now concern that are these movies even going to be successful? And so no. it, you're, you're in some ways you're taking a little bit of a risk too. signing on. Like what if, like, I don't think it's going to happen, but like, let's say comic book fatigue is legit and nobody wants to see these movies anymore. And now you're locked into doing these movies and they're going to tank and it's going to kind of tank your career. Cause, cause that's yeah. how act that whole acting world works. Like if you do too many flops, you you're, you're not hot anymore and you don't get other roles. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's a real problem. Go ahead. You know, and I, I think that it, here's my take on the MCU. Okay. I'm a, I, I spent way too much money being a film major. So I wasted a lot of time thinking about this crap, but I think <laughs> that the beginning of the MCU is really a golden age. I mean, it's amazing. I think that the MCU kind of reflects comic history in an odd way. And between Iron Man and Endgame is a golden age. I, I think it's amazing. Uh, it's a modern Marvel and Hollywood history what they accomplished. But I think that we are post golden age. And I and I think that there could be a silver age. I think that there could be a new better age, but I think that we're kind of in between those two. And right now it's really hitting the skids because I, I just feel like they're so lost in what their goals used to be. Their goals used to be on a singular film with like the back idea of more movies. And now they're constantly focused on the big picture. And when you go and sit in the theater, you're like, I don't want to think about the next 10 movies. I want to, I paid, you know, you pay 50 bucks. If you take your family or 75 bucks and it's yeah. such ass. Dude, you said will, that so you know, well. You, you I will nailed say my thoughts. I'll counter that though. I agree. You want obviously each film to stand alone as an, a great film. It's entertaining. But I will say that during phase four, I was a little bit displeased with the fact that they weren't tied together in some cases. You know, like they early on in COVID, like they had to, they had to kind of make them a little bit self-contained with not a lot of teases and, 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 and plot lines to the next thing leading to the next thing, because they didn't know when movies were going to be done or released. So they like, same thing with the shows. And I think it felt very kind of like disjointed and people really love that connectivity from the, the first era too. So I think that was a little bit of a problem as well. I have a, a couple quick points uh, to kind of rebut Chris. First of all, I can't believe you go to the, fam uh, the movies with your family. I thought all of us went to the movies at midnight showings by yourself with all the other <laughs> middle-aged losers. Well, we don't go anymore. <laughs> we, wait, we wait for streaming now. Okay, yeah, because I don't even have time. Like, I go at, like, the 1030 showing by myself like an idiot, whatever. Um, but the thing is, I, I – one thing everyone always says, like, you know, the grass is always greener, or we think back nostalgically, like, wow, it was so great. People forget one, there were a lot of stinkers in the early MCU, right? Like mm -hmm. Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3. Like we we tend to say, Oh, it was so amazing back then. We forget how many not great movies were. Phase three was really like the sweet spot, right? I also think people are, and I don't think I think the criticism is fair, but I think people are they don't give uh Disney enough credit. They were up against a lot of stuff when phase four started. You had the pandemic. You had two writer strikes. You had the death of one of the major stars move forward. Like everyone's so harsh on them. It's like, yeah, but they did pretty good with what they had, the timing of things. So yeah, not as great. They had too much content. We know that. Um, I guess I'm being more forgiving, but to answer, you know, Richard's question, I think it can have a silver age, but you're right. They don't, they lost that simple. We have one movie to get to. Let's only do three movies to get there instead of let's do seven movies to get there and seven TV shows. I think it's just very difficult to have a cohesive story there over that many years where people are going to lose interest. So I think um, it I'm was just, out. I'm being optimistic. I think it was just a different, when you look back, they didn't, they didn't even know they were going to get to Avengers. No, yeah. They didn't know they, they, you know, it was like, we're just doing Iron Man. We're just doing cap. Maybe someday we'll get there. And now the focus is different. It's, it's not like on the main character all the time. It is sometimes, but sometimes it's, 
focused more in the long game and not the short, but you're sitting in the short game. And yes. I think that I remember like losing my shit in the theater when Samuel L. Jackson showed up and said, Hey, I want to talk to you about the and Avengers then, initiative. Exactly. And then in the background, we're like, Hey, that's Cap Shield in the background. Right. Yeah. And it would be a <laughs> tiny little addition to the very, very end of the movie, but you made it through the whole movie and you made it through Iron Man's story. I also think another thing is that they're, you know, like in the beginning when it was just Marvel Studios, I think there was a lot of love for the characters and i think that there was a lot of care taken on the characters and i and i know it's kind of a hippy dippy thing but i really think that like love is missing from a lot of the filmmaking now and i think it's it's shareholders and it's cash and it's big picture and it's secret wars and i think a lot of the directors and stuff they get there don't necessarily love those characters well, chris i think you nailed it because remember kevin feige couldn't control all the projects so he started subbing out more control to different and directors too. you make yeah. the movie you want to make in some cases it worked like taika watiti ragnarok was great and he goes oh look at this i can oh, give this project to put their heart into it but it can go too far right and that's where when you start ceding control to some directors that gets away from the big picture they may not have the same attachment to these characters as other people did in the past you know i and, think that's what you're when, saying. yeah and when that happened when they moved the the structure around and they move Feige up. I was like, Oh, this is going to be yep. so bad because I think he's a genius. And I yep. think he has immense love for those characters and will protect them because they would have the system where like the director would finish the edit and Feige would intercept the end of the edit and watch it and give it right. notes. Like nothing would get released without him. But once they put, you know, nine movies on his slate and whatever five shows under his belt. It's like, how many notes can the guy give? How in depth can he be? Right. And I don't know that everyone at the that's my rant. I'm it, ranting. No, that's no, it. true. But I mean, one more one more example: Eternals, which honestly is a movie I am for, more forgiving of than most people. I actually kind of liked Eternals. It, obviously, it was a huge disappointment. I did too. It, was I did too. it wasn't that bad. But that was a perfect case of like, Chloe Zhao is an Academy Award winner. We're not going to question this movie at all. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, she doesn't really get the Eternals. That was something that they had too many characters or they need to stretch it out. That was like they ceded complete control. And then they go, oops, too much control. I think that's where they went with the Phase 4. But I think they had to. They bit off more than they can chew. And there's just not enough Kevin Feige to go around. Or anybody. That can, there's no Russos, you know, really steering the ship. So um, props to them for trying. But... I think they got lucky for a lot of the uh, the first three phases of the MCU. To bring it back to X Men and X Men in the movies, oh, I, I, and, and to to your point, um, Mike, I think you could definitely go down the road where you kind of just you take the characters that are in existence now and just do them the way X Men should be or the way we love x-men as x-men fans but it really kind of depends on i think what the mcu wants to do right like they're kind of coming up to a point where like do we need to reboot completely is it partially rebooted like how are they going to handle that because it is kind of weird trying to explain where the heck mutants have been all this time in the MCU in the 616, um, but yet use the characters that are already established, you know what I mean? Like, they're gonna have to do some kind of multiverse, yeah, right. that's probably what they're gonna do. Thing. Like, yeah. something's gonna have to happen there that ma that. makes yep. it make well, it. yeah, I, I'm agreeing with you on that. Seen I, the Marvels yet? <laughs> I, I think. <laughs> Yeah, if you haven't seen the Marvels, um, I see the Marvels. Let's see spoilers. The Marvels. Earmuffs. Here. Yeah. <laughs> and if you haven't watched YouTube in the last three months. <laughs> if your eyes and ears are off. <laughs> if you don't have eyes and ears. Uh, and you only that came out in like October, nose, November. <laughs> Uh, the, you know that we have a Kelsey Grammer appearance uh, as you know as Beast, and that was that. And I think really what we're what what we what we're all kind of anticipating with Deadpool is that you know Deadpool is kind of going to be the either a, kind of a culmination point, um, the linchpin. And, and I think Ryan Reynolds is kind of pushing that. I mean, you know, he Johnny on the spot here. Right there, you go. 
There you go, right there. Good. You do this, by the way. Every time someone mentions a mutant, one of us has to grab the book, right? <laughs> First this appearance or just the title? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you want, whatever. I you just want to grab Rob, but I feel whatever you get. I think I can grab my two from over there somewhere. Anyway, you're right, Travis, um, and, and binary, right? Yeah, I mean, and it, it's. I think we're gonna. I think what we'll end up. Yes, and binary, yes, as well. So uh, we, it, it, for uh, for that matter, I think it's gonna be interesting. What we're gonna see is, um, and you know, honestly, this is kind of the ultimate universe thing too. It, it kind of ties back to this. I think that's what we're seeing this will be this will be a so, i think we're going to see a soft reboot right we're not rebooting the universe we're not getting we're not saying what we have done is gone but we're going to say that these characters weren't a part of this universe and then they're going to become crashing in because we've already they've already kind of established these crashing points within the at least within the back in the back side of things you know uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know that these universes are crashing together and i don't know i i still i still think and and when and i know this goes away from x-men but it ties in what we're talking about i still think uh the third atman movie is the most uh prolific when it comes to this because that movie ended in a different universe and everybody and every, and i don't think everybody caught that it is not the same universe that they started in Hmm. It's just, yeah, it's yeah, just he, not. He switched timelines. He switched timelines. Completely switched timelines. I mean, I don't think he switched time. The time I have to go back and watch weird. that again. Then. Wait, and you're saying that he switched. I heard the, that that could be like a rumor, but I, I, I nah, no, it's not. No one he, he switched. He, everybody treat, treats him differently at the end yeah. of the movie. Than they did at the beginning, where they're like, "Here's a free cup of coffee and everything." Everybody's Spider totally Man. different to him. So yeah, they, they know who he is. Are they taking us as the audience? on as a new universe too like are they taking the audience with them is yeah. that what you're saying travis that's what i'm saying yeah i'm saying yeah. that that's yeah. like a the Tom end of -Man, level spoiler not. twist right this is like vanilla sky or like minority report people go back and go oh he's actually still unconscious and i don't know if i buy it it was uh, all well, a dream the whole time. It, was no, it wasn't a dream. I, I'm just saying dream. they went, they went, they went down into the, they went down to the, into the microverse, and then they come back up. And when they come back up, because of the nature of the quantum of the quantum universe and the quantum, and if you go string theory, and the whole multiverse thing, thing right? Kang, yeah. The Kang and the whole multiverse thing, Loki and the whole multiverse thing. If we really want to go that go the route. Oh they, my God, the ending of that was so good. They came out. <laughs> <laughs> and they were not in the universe that they were at. It, you know, and, it, and it would make sense because then we have the same kind of ending to uh, to Marvels, right? She ends up not in her universe, and so this is not a this is a precedent that that is in this in in this in this multiverse stuff that's going on. Well, if People that's are true. coming. If that is true, remember they fired the writer Jeff Loveness because they were disappointed how bad the movie did. So if that was the big twist, no one, not many people got it, and they were like, "You're fired." Everyone walked out of the theater before. Yeah, right. Exactly. So maybe that is true. It'll be a great, like you know, retroactive. Like I yeah. missed that. I was asleep when that happened. <laughs> oh, oh, oh that's well, to, bring, to bring it back to Ryan's point, though, and I bring it back to the original question. Let's let's go with this. If you guys don't mind me throwing a bullet point out there for the agenda. Uh, if you were to have a rebooted X Men right now, new team out of the blue, come from another dimension, whatever it is, what is your team? Because mm. you know it can't be a it can't be 10, 12 new people like Eternals. New X Men. You know you have probably like a six, seven, or eight tops. What would they be? Giant size. I, I gotta go giant jump. size. Astonishing um, X Men. I would. I mine's, my, mine's the eighties team. <laughs> What, which 80s team? Which part of the 80s team? The, it's Wolverine, oh, Colossus, Nightcrawler, Rogue, Storm, Cyclops. Yeah, I, right. I, I'm kind of the same. I, mine's kind of that Rogue. Once Rogue joined, um, I wouldn't have Dazzler or Longshot, though. I'd probably do... Um, I'd probably That's too late. Do That's like almost 90s. Nope. I'd, no side I'd, throw, I'd throw Gambit in there, maybe. Gambit See, nice. I think it's the Burn Claremont, you know, X Men. Yeah. You know, it yeah. is those the yeah. new team, yeah. the Wolverine, Storm, Colossus, yeah. Cyclops. You know, 
And then you could probably sprinkle in Gambit and Rogue, right? You could probably sprinkle, sprinkle in a couple of outliers. Well, that's kind out. of the way that team worked, right, Mike? It, right. it was uh, just a bunch of individual mutants that they brought together and said, okay, now you're a team. Yeah. Go fight yeah. evil, you know? Right. They can even do the original X Men and the sequel get the giant size. Even Xavier, they they're stuck somewhere. Krakoa maybe, but Xavier has to recruit them <laughs> one by one. Imagine if it was a Disney Plus. Every episode is like this episode is Nightcrawler. It's him recruiting Nightcrawler. Next episode, Colossus. I mean, giant, be killer, giant right? Size X Men on Disney yeah, yeah, Plus in, in a series. Like, come on, it writes itself, guys. Right? Oh, how many tag? Where's our paycheck? <laughs> yeah. Disney. Yeah. I think giant size would be like stops the combine on the farm. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. With a kid that may or may not be a sister <laughs> retroactively. Give that to me, please. Right. <laughs> Have you guys been watching What If? I mean, it's been cool that we get yes. all the voice actors who are the real like uh somebody said Kate Blanchett earlier. She That's played cool. fucking Hella, man. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most Can of them I, came back. That was Can one I, of my uh, favorite episodes. I just want to ask a hot topic, and this is about the X Men movies. Okay, um, there was a Marvel executive that has come out, and she said, and I and I understand that I'm asking this to seven men, but I want to know what you think. There was a Marvel executive who still works there, and she said, "We're not going to call them the X Men oh, because the X Men right. is sexist." And they should right. be called the mutants. And I want to know uh, within the parameters of us not getting Ryan's channel canceled, what you think of that? Because I think that's um, insane. Yeah, I agree. It's it, if if you want to market something to everyone who's ever heard of the comic X Men, you don't call it mutants. You call it the X Men. It is just how it is. I mean, it doesn't even matter. I don't care. You, you, I could be the you know the fourth wave feminist, and I would still want to have my comic, my movie called X Men, because no matter what, name. it's a brand. It's a brand name. 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 It's Why? not even. It's That's not. What I think. It's not sexist. It's yeah. a brand name. I you don't. Think, you don't. I think you don't. Rubbing off so, sixty years of branding. Well, think about yeah. this. Would you? Would you? What? What happens if you decide that Coke is sexist? Would you? rebrand coke to be something else i mean it's one of those it's it's a brand name well, I mean, they X tried Man, X Man, New coke? An, <laughs> an x man is a genderless thing like in the right in the in, when they refer to it in comics they'll talk about you know this is kitty pride blah 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 and, and, and it'll be like you know ninja warrior x man it's a genderless thing it's not like they're yeah. saying she's a man so. Right. Well, and I think it's really missing. It's like the most surface level thing because to me, the X Men are the obviously we all know are, are the yeah. most inclusive group in the Marvel universe. Yeah. And to me, they have the strongest, my favorite women in the entire universe. Preach, yeah. preach, right? Yeah, no doubt. And so I, I just think focusing on the men in. in scrubbing away 60 years of branding would just be brand suicide and one of the best x titles in the last 20 years was a all-female x title i loved it written by uh brian um oh, what's his last name i can't think of his last name but anyway it wasn't yeah. bendis no no it wasn't bendis it was a, Frank it, on one. <laughs> no it doesn't matter uh it, but the guy who wrote star wars for uh, for dark horse at the very end before they switched before they got moved over to dc i mean to marvel uh but the uh but anyway it doesn't matter it it was still a great story um i i've shown a couple issues because we it has you know it has jubilee with a baby and vampire that's, that's a very funny. good series the and art it was fantastic fantastic and yeah. you know you had you had you had a great group of, of of characters uh all super powerful all having to come together storm is the ex is the leader of the team and I mean, you know, uh, it, it, it just, it's one of my favorite books. I actually was collecting, recollecting a run of it recently. Um, I'm, I've got a pretty good solid run now of it. So, yep. But, I, but I, so X Men, not, not sexist. That's my yeah. opinion. So when the movie Brandy comes out and it's called, term. we don't so. want it, none of us want it called The Mutants. 
No. 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 I don't think that's a real thing. I know that one executive said it, but I don't think that will ever happen. Yeah, I don't think that will happen. I think I think that get, executive got moved to a different thing. Now she's in charge of the so much uh, built in equity to the term X Men. Yeah. It's like media you know, games, it's, and it's action literally figures, and, yeah, yeah. It's and like they so, honestly they would get destroyed too. Well, yeah, if they you guys were talking about the actors uh, aging out for the the Fox guys. What about the uh, X Men First Class guys? I don't love any of them. That's the thing. They're no, fine. Yeah. I like, oh, I like Fast Bender is the only one I really Fast the only one. McAvoy was good. McAvoy was fine. Um, uh, was was fine McAvoy too. and Fast Bender, I thought were, were good. Yeah. yeah. Um, but well, and, no one, and, no and obviously uh, Jennifer Lawrence is Mystique. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, I didn't like that Sorry. version of Mystique. Like, yeah. I didn't like. Yeah, I didn't like the young the young ones that they added in. It's like um, I don't know. It's like. Cyclops was tiny and yeah. like I don't know, Nightcrawler wasn't good. I, I didn't mind Storm, but yeah, I would just re I would I don't know. The actors play Storm. She said she never she didn't doesn't want to do it. If, she, if they were asked, she would say no. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. I think I think I, like her. I think you're gonna end up in a world if you did want to bring back the Fox originals. I think you'll end up in a world where you'll get some of them and then others you might not. And and maybe it's like very, they do the variant thing. Like, I don't know, but um, I, I think they're all too old. They're just going to reset it. Yeah. Wasn't there, uh, there was a rumor it's going to be uh, Ramkey Jansen's Phoenix versus uh, Scarlet Witch from the MCU. I saw that I mean, too. I, movie. That's not, a, at least not for Deadpool. It's not happening. <laughs> Richard says way too much Magneto in the movies. What? On toad. I sorry, Richard. No, I gotta disagree. More Magneto. Yeah. <laughs> Are they yeah, going yeah. Magneto and the Master in the Master cartoon? Right. Oh, just give yeah. us a Magneto just for movie. Richard. I don't yeah. think Magneto necessarily has to be the big bad again. Like, yeah. we're gonna support Magneto. <laughs> <laughs> it's the brotherhood of people mutants love up it. there. <laughs> I love it. Um, I think they're gonna. I I don't know. It, love it. Long term, big bad. I I think they could probably they could go with anybody. They could go with. You want Mister Sinister, Ryan? You have eight I, copies of. X I know, but I don't know one. if Mister Sinister is gonna be a one time bad guy or a Thanos <laughs> over time Unsub bad guy. Richard. <laughs> That's good. Did you uh did you see that did you notice in uh, Deadpool 2 was the SX uh school for mutant reform? Yeah. Uh yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I want Mr. And Sinister. then uh it, there was a lot of it hinted at in the new mutants movie. Sinister, uh, be, Sinister movie. I I know they're gonna bring him. It's just a matter of how and when. Um, but he's the freshest him and Omega Red good. are the freshest villains that he's, have never been on guy. on live screen. <laughs> The thing with the X Men, there is no overarching big villains. There's lots of small villains, and even yeah. then, their allegiance is always. The it Magneto's the, the story. best, yeah. but Magneto, yeah. I've always said this, isn't really a bad guy. He's actually a better X Men <laughs> than he is a villain of the yeah. X Men. There yeah. aren't many big villains. You get Apocalypse, they used him. Uh, you got Sinister would be good, but again, he's depending on how you use him, he's kind of he could be a plucky one-off kind of character or a, a scary yeah, threat. Or he could be the yeah. guy pulling all the threat, all the strings behind the scenes, right? Like it, it, it all depends. This sentinel has always been a good thing. Nimrod, yeah, we could do Nimrod. Yeah, I, I, Nimrod. I think it could, it could be none of them. It might be more of a, a the world's out to get the mutants and it's Sentinels and it's Trask and all those guys. You know, like. Yeah. Um, I mean that's kind of what they did though already. I know. I'm just saying there's so many different ways at it. They've done a lot of things already, right? So Hume, Richard humans. Yeah. yeah. Shadow yeah. King, Shadow Kings. That's Shadow cool. King. Shadow King was in the Legion show. Right. Of course. Was, so. You know what I mean? They've done a, they've done everything but uh, TJ Nell, the Brood man, send him to space. A Brood would be a yeah. off, bro. Brood bad guys. Come on. Crystal. It could be. Uh, there we go. Yes, there we go. Talking my language now, guys. Yeah, and you can really have like between that and the um, 
I mean, the M Kron crystal, you know, that, that is going to, that can be a whole saga for sure. But I'm also so like, excited. you can also sprinkle in some like meaningless stories that are fun. Like everything in the Savage Land. Love Savage, Savage Land. Savage Land is fun. Yeah. Sauron. Yeah. I mean, they can, I even, they can even go Sauron, right. So I always have to push that. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, they, I mean, they can go cosmic, they can go cosmic with it too. And, and go in when, you know, when they're out there with the star jammers and and all that, and just kind of go like, uh, there it is, nice. a whole storyline where it's uh, a, Guardians of the Galaxy. Robert, you know. What up, Paper Chase? Yes, they gotta wait. I mean, uh, Richard mentioned God Loves Man Kills. I mean, that that's sort of X2, not yeah. fully, mm -hmm. obviously, but Striker was the villain in X2, yeah, uh, just totally not the one from that story, truly, more of a Gold. Yeah, not another bad iteration of the Phoenix Saga. Please. Yeah, and yeah. Let's. <laughs> um, actually, I'm going to say Phoenix Saga. I think I haven't seen enough of. Absolutely. Hey, man, if they did it right, if they did it right, then they you did can it right, the, right. Then you can do the Mcron Crystal, and you know those, that's what every writer says, and they never get it right. Time, They're like, I'm it's doing it right this time. Somehow the for the Phoenix Force just happens and like you know that's uh, it's supposed to come from space, man. Well, Remind I mean, me, I think it, you're. Go ahead, Dan. Sorry, uh, I was just curious. Did they bring in the um, uh, Hellfire Club and Sebastian Shaw into that no. movie? X One, mm -hmm. uh, or sorry, uh, First oh, Class yeah, was first Sebastian class. Shaw and. Uh, but it was just like I subtly see. Sebastian Shaw. Did was have Emma. Well, no, he yeah. was the main was in the main of the film. Yeah, he was the oh, main Kevin Bacon. That's right, Kevin but, Bacon. But um, oh, again, <laughs> they could do it better, right? They and they're they're angry. Angry. Their mind. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I do love those scenarios where people like when they start colliding the different universes together. Like we've seen Kevin Bacon's an actor in the MCU and a villain in Fox. And so what happens? Sebastian Shaw. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That that'll be hilarious. That would be yeah. hilarious. That's tough. I actually give a lot of thought to the villains of X Men. It's it's tough, honestly. I don't think they have any big like villains like that. They're gonna be small time villains, or you have just a generalized threat. But I, honestly, guys, I hate to say this. What defines the X Men is how humankind treats them. Yeah, but it does get boring after time, and I don't think it works in the current movies that we have, where people seem to like all superheroes. It doesn't always hold water in the comic books either. You guys are okay with the Avengers, but you're not okay with the X Men. It's always odd. I think it's a harder sell even for the the movies. So um, I think they need to pick. I think it's going to be almost smaller villains. And then you use the bigger, just general Marvel villains that they'll go up sprinkle against. Sprinkle them in there just as yeah, like Easter eggs. And they'll have to go up against Dr. Doom, you know? Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think yes. I think interestingly enough, um, the one thing I, I noticed from like Hawk, uh, from uh, the uh, Winter Soldier uh the new Captain America series. Anyway, Falcon Winter Soldier. That there was a lot of hate towards heroes in that movie and that show. And I think I think that was what they were trying to build towards was building that up. But you know, again, we're we're, we're talking about the pandemic time, so we have a lot of uh, different things that are like that. You know, we could if 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 uh, if Secret Invasion had you know any uh, was was good, um, we we could have uh, had. We, you could have had a lot more hate for, and anger towards towards heroes and things like that as well yeah. within that within that because you could have used that as a launching point for a story you know I mean and, it could have been seeded through the entire right. MCU like just small like trickles like Ovia and all all the disasters right and we also have you know we just recently had of course the very first of the pandemic releases was um, was was uh, was WandaVision, right? And quite honestly, after seeing uh, Doctor Strange in Mom, the uh, the Wanda being a villain in that makes the reality of her being a villain in in WandaVision so much more palpable that you realize, oh, she's not a good guy. We were we had we had, we had this ideal of her from the other movies. And it kind of it kind of maybe kind of maybe trickled into that, and I think I don't think you really catch on that she's the villain. I thought they let her off too easy in that show. I remember thinking yeah. that when we did. I'm like, but then just... then when that's what I liked about the the Doctor Strange movie. I mean, it may not have been the Doctor Strange movie we all wanted. 
but I felt like they they captured the villainy of what Wanda had done, and and I thought that was uh, I that I thought that was important, and I felt like that really. Um, I feel it, it, it didn't. It, again, I'm I, you know I'm, maybe I'm being too gracious <laughs> with how the stories were put together, um, but I think I think uh, I think those those are the things that could they could a good writer could pop to, could grab that. Yeah. hate from there and start we'll drawing that. They need to follow up with it. We haven't seen it really since then. I, I do got to point out both both Chris and Brian. Yeah, I've said I've said this before. I think on Brian's channel before. I want a long shot Disney Plus series, six episodes. Do long shot Mojo Spiral. Do it. It can be yeah. completely standalone. You don't need to mention anything else. There I'm there for, it, and you could just use that <laughs> as the backbones of. I love them. Love them. Nice. Oh yeah. Come on. I would for that. It's, it's it's begging for a Disney Plus short format. Oh, Come good. On. So good. absolutely. That I is always, that, that is a absolutely. perfect short series, mini series type yep. of thing. Oh, it's so, so good. Tag Bob Iger, get him in here. Let's start yeah, getting. Why did you invite him, Ryan? I thought did could he not make it? <laughs> <laughs> it was like the mojo, the mojo tied into the. We've got uh, to get our ducks in order before before we we present to Bob and Kevin. <laughs> so we're betting it, yeah. It's like that's that's council meeting number ten. Once we've got the whole presentation set up, and it's like, welcome Bob and and Kevin. We'd like to. Tell <laughs> there you you go. Can Here's how we laid it out. In this, yeah, in this climate of of our economy. Yeah. Each one of us has a different dry erase board behind us. We get up each phase. <laughs> Presentations. <laughs> They're just going to steal our ideas and not pay us. Chris will now talk about the Mojo uh, Spiral long shot miniseries on Disney Plus. I see the floor to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> we tie that Mojo verse into the new Doctor Strange movie. He's going into all those, cool. you know, have, one, you have a thing where, like, yeah, like, uh, uh, someone like Doctor Strange who's moving through realities ends up in the mojo verse, like, in a in a post credit Deadpool or and Wolverine, dude. Deadpool and Wolverine can end up in a, in a all these, TV show. Yeah, possibilities are endless. Ten minutes. But I will yeah. say, it would be kind of odd if if Longshot was the first thing that they did full full force with like a new x-men world i that would be, be an awesome. interesting choice it would be awesome don't get me wrong but i would think they would go they would try and start to establish the x-men yeah. team before they would do that you guys got the first x-men you're gonna learn about has a mullet enjoy <laughs> 24 <laughs> bringing it back <laughs> bringing it back cool yeah so um, we've covered the MCU. We've covered modern X Men storylines. Should we look at some stuff? Do you guys got some stuff to show? I got stuff to show. Toys. Oh, we got stuff to show. We we've got already seen. Show. We've already seen a couple helmets. You know, it's a bit crazy here. <laughs> Volunteers. Anybody who wants to start? Here, I'll go, I'll go around the first. horn. Start with Mike. He's up top. Yeah. Ah, oh, I only have, all right. Well, I have to reach behind me. Um, I, I'm going to show this book because Dan, show Dan first. Dan, stand up. Show show your T-shirt, please. Show us that shirt, Dan. I can't believe you got the shirt, right? I love how Let's Dan was like doing interior decorating during this. Um, <laughs> That's true. During yeah. this, he was trying to up his. Well, after I saw your uh, your video of, about that, I ran to Target and picked this. this video. <laughs> I, I would kill yeah. him. I saw it. So this is the Jen Bartel variant of Marvel Comics One Thousand. Beautiful. I have uh, Storm is my favorite super heroine by far. Certainly my favorite. You know X Men leader. I absolutely love Storm. Look at her. Um, I love this cover. I don't like modern comic books that much as we've discussed, but look, look at this variant. It's gorgeous. One fifty variant. Oh, now. I love my commenters. I love them. You guys know. I love every single one. I love when they reach out. But goodness me, I said I don't love J. Scott Campbell. I had uh -oh. a, oh my god, uh -oh. I knew I was gonna get crap for it. I had a Jean Grey. I have it right here. I gotta show it to you for the story. Hold on. Right unsubscribe, here. unsubscribe, unsubscribe. <laughs> here we go. Oh, do I not have it? I lied. I don't have it. Okay, I had a Jean Grey 
variant by J. Scott Campbell. I got it from my little sister who loves Jean Grey. I don't love it. He's very talented. I don't love him. They're very cartoony. Someone down in my comments goes, how could you possibly say that when this cover that you said you liked is so much more cartoony? <laughs> and he and he couldn't get past the fact I like this cover but didn't like the Jean Grey, J. Scott Campbell. Um, I don't think they're close. I don't even think they're in the same realm. How could that. you say that? Cartoony is not so... the right definition he's, he's, he's working with. I was, I was, and I'm always nice. Kill him with kindness. I just said, hey, art is subjective. That's the way it is. But behind the scenes, I was like, no, I want to fight about this. So this is me <laughs> doing this cover with love. And Dan, you've redeemed my entire stance on this with that t-shirt. So I just want to point that out. That's so funny. That's all I, I have got. to but say that I love that cover. That, that's, that's like awesome. an awesome cover. I love it. Yeah. Go to someone else, and I'll find that. Uh, I'll find that other book. Um, by the way, for the for the record, Mike, I'm I'm with you. I don't hate his his artwork for sure. Like, but t like to me, he he draws the same woman in every, um, and they all have that nose like thing but going he's on. Taylor Swift over now. There. They're all upturned. I mean, they, it's very sexy. It's it's you know, that's it's Taylor beautiful. Swift. <laughs> Yeah, it is Taylor Swift. But that's um, definitely more cartoony though. It's, it's a thing. It's a certain <laughs> thing. That's you know, like if you like um what, it's like anime. If you like anime, anime, right? Yeah. Um yeah, I mean exactly. It's like um um uh sorry, the guy who the, the guy who draws the big headed cute covers, everybody looks like a, a Funko Pop. Um, people love him. Oh, Scotty Young. Scotty Young, people yes. love that, but it's different. That and I that's don't fine. Care. To me, J. Scott Campbell, it's different, and that's fine. It's like um, Peach Momoko, you know. Yeah. Oh, is it that, like, that that one no right one there? there? Yeah, let's let's fight about this for a second. Let's fight. Let's, let's fight. fight about this for a second. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. As an X Men fan, I like it. I'm not saying I don't like it. I bought it, right? It's, right. So we got G. Grant, all the different Super costumes. Hot. It's pretty cool, right? But if you made this cover and you told me that this was MJ dressed up cosplay as Jean Grey. I wouldn't know the difference. Yeah. It looks exactly the same. 100%. 100% exaggerated body type. Like look at look at the you know the the Madeline Pryor. Come on. Like no one looks like that. Um and the smile with the teeth for me, the nose, it's always the same. It's the same. For me I just this looks like a real person. And she looks like a goddess and she's powerful. I love it. I just love it way more. So more artistic too, right? Like that that yeah. that cover is you know, playing Thank with you. color and it's, it's different. It's no, I wouldn't say cartoony though. That's pa paper chase comics, best quote of the night. Abs that you captured everything I think about J. Scott Campbell. That's it. That's it. <laughs> totally sexy That's Disney, yeah. sexy Disney princesses. N no thanks. Yeah. So. All right. <laughs> well, there's two the messages show. in the private chat. Is is that your buddy trying to get in, right? No, that was Travis. And um, Travis trying to message you privately. To speak got on to, yeah, uh, to the Storm thing. I don't think I've ever told you guys my uh, daughter's uh, middle name is Storm. Cool. Um, oh, cool. I love Storm as well. And that was the that was. She hates it. She was like, "Why didn't you middle name me Sparkles or Rainbow or something fun?" <laughs> my, my daughter's middle name is that's Kurt not Wagner, cool. So. What is middle? What is, what did you say? My, my daughter's middle name is Kurt Wagner. So. <laughs> Kurt wait until Wagner. I name my wait until I name my son uh, Rasputin as the middle name. Yeah. It's gonna be a real hit. Piotr. Piotr. Um, I, I can show some stuff because I'm yeah, already here. Something. Unless somebody else had something ready. Whip it out, Dan. You got it. Hey. Um, well, yeah, this was like a new manufacturer. I got like a the tin pail lunch box. Oh, those are awesome. Of uh, I, my wife gave me that for. Oh, it came with a thermos. Wife gave me that for uh, I think Christmas. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and then I'll show the 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 comics that I got or that I showed on Mon's comics uh, year one year anniversary. Um, there was a CGC submission. I posted a couple of the books on my Instagram recently. Um, the biggest or the most expensive one was this one. Hello. Mm -hmm. So that was um, that's a a huge come up for me. Wow. Um, always dug this. Uh, me and Bigby did a trade earlier um, that got me a, like a lower grade copy that I'm really happy with. So I'm, I'm probably going to nice. 
What's that? <laughs> and it's signed. Yeah, it's signed well, uh, by the writer in the, on the on the inside splash page, which I love. I love the if I'm gonna have a signature, I love the splash page signature. Love the the old school style. And then I also got this as well, which is very you know, cool. Uh, couldn't believe it. Um, so really, really stoked about that. Did you and buy then, them graded or did you get them graded, Dan? So I that was my submission. It was my second ever CGC submission. I Whoa. did three along. You guys need to watch the Dan's reel on Instagram about that. <laughs> a work oh, yeah. Yeah. If you haven't checked that out, go on to Instagram. And I made this um, reel on. It's a work of art is what it is. It was. Uh, it is. Thank you. I think I posted it on Monday or something. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, that was a lot of fun. Um, and then, but my favorite one back, I got three of them back, was uh, X-Men 129 right here. Um, uh, just, uh, I mean, you know, Hellfire Club, we were talking about them. Stacked. And uh, so super stoked about those. And then, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm over the moon because they were all higher grades than I had assumed. And I have this weird feeling about it. Like I'm, I want to be full of gratitude um, because I, I'm super stoked. And at the same time, kind of feel like an imposter. Like I didn't deserve them because people, or, or if I was planning on getting a nine, eight in the Wolverine, I could, I wouldn't even dream of setting the goal to find a raw one and, and, and submit it. So I feel like almost like I didn't earn it. And it, and it feels kind of like, um, like, like I feel like an imposter kind of, you know, I'd like to let that feeling go and feel like I'm the man I did this, but, um, there's part of me that doesn't quite feel right about it. I don't know why, but you feel uh, like, cause it's, you can't believe it. Like you can't yeah. came back a nine, eight, like. Were you expecting it to be a 9-8 or did you think it no, was like a 8 so or something? I expected both 9-8s that came back to be 9-4s. And, wow. and the 9-6, I was hoping, I was thinking 9-2, maybe a 9-4 if I was lucky. And you hit the lottery, that grader got laid the night before or something. I, I really do think that <laughs> it was just a situation where they were like, you know what, whatever. Like, close enough. That's you know? great. And, um, so, yeah, it's great. Um it is great. It is absolutely great. It is and absolutely I have nothing great. to complain Don't look about, a gift you know. horse in the mouth. Yeah. yeah. Say again? You got the good one that day. You're, you guys gave me great advice as far as like, you know, don't feel bad about it. It is what it is. And that's, you know, because because when I do look further into it and look at other books of the same grade, I definitely find ones that are right. in that same grade range and, and they look like mine or, or worse. And uh, so, you know, that it is what it is. Um, but awesome. just incredibly, um, you know, honored to, to own those. So, yeah, those are the, oh, that's all I'll share right now. I have, I, I just spent a bunch of money um, <laughs> to me, for me, um, on, on comics recently. And uh, I'll show those on another, we're, we're going to keep doing this, right? So another when time. I get them, I'll show them. We look forward to it. Thank Sweet. You. Who wants to show some more stuff? Eric. Eric's locked and loaded. I'm locked and loaded. I got some stuff. I got a, okay, you know cool. me, I got a stack next to me. So uh, see if I can hold back some of it. First thing I want to show, just because I knew you were going to be on here, Mike. Oh. I had a guy at the comic store give this to me. It's probably something yes. you want to track down. I guess this was packaged with action figures. It's like a poster book. Okay. So it's got like pinup posters of Nightcrawler in here. I've wow. never seen it because I have so. that cover, not in that. So okay, yeah, I, I yeah mean, it's like a I poster book. Books, so I yeah. tried finding it online. I couldn't find it anywhere. He said it was with action figures. So I thought I'd just bring it up to you, something to look oh. for. I mean, I have to have it now. That's, <laughs> That's what I figured. <laughs> you go on eBay right now. While you're talking. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to show a couple things I got. Some of these I got today, actually. Uh, I was at a local store digging through their dollar bins, and I found this little beauty. What if Phoenix had not died? Uh, okay. I've been kind of tracking, trying to chase this one down for a while. I couldn't find one. I got this for a dollar. I couldn't pass up a dollar. Yep. You know, at nice. least read it and stuff. I can always replace it later. 
Um, I've been slowly getting some of the X Men related what ifs from back then. So, pretty super stoked to find that. I always joke uh, that's the what if story with the shortest shelf shelf life ever because <laughs> they brought it back to life like a year after that. Yeah, movie. yeah. <laughs> when Chris Claremont was pissed. <laughs> um, this was a replacement one. I guess one of my early ones I got as a kid and I read over and over. With the black cover, my original had so many spine ticks on it. So I found a nice high grade one to replace it. Uh, so yeah, I'm starting to buy replacement comics now. Uh, I have to explain to my wife that yeah, I have that, but this one's mm -hmm. nicer. <laughs> it's shinier. <laughs> <laughs> and then one more. It's not technically an X Men one. I have the big stack here, but. Uh, this was one that I got from my buddy down here in the corner, but it is the first time Juggy teams up with the Hulk. I'm yeah. super stoked to get this from you, Chris. That's awesome. Nice. On the other yeah. side now. Yeah. And that origin of Juggernaut in that one? Yeah. It has the origin of them too. Yeah. So yeah, it was kind of a big book. Um, That's I've been sweet. starting to look at some of those Hulk books. Uh, just, there's a lot of like cameos and <laughs> First appearances in and great series. value right now for those. Yeah. 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 That's cool. So, there's just a couple. I can pass it along. Thanks for sharing. Nice. Who's up next? I could be up next. You're up I got next. Some, so I tried to show these earlier, but because of the background, it wouldn't allow me to show you them. Um, um, this is a little bit easier now. So this is uh this is powers of X. Number one, the rise of powers of X. And I was, I, and, and of course, there's the fall of House of X, number one. Um, I like that cover with the reflection and his, just, his knuckles. Just, yeah, yeah, just it's awesome. Yeah, great yeah. action. Yeah, I actually, I, I, yeah, I got I have two of those. Now, see, this cover, this one's not the one I wanted to show, but I, because, but I don't have, I can't grab the other one because it's not near me. But I thought this was a great. Oh, that's one. yes. That one is this hot idea right was now, so too. awesome. Yes. And so, yeah. and then, and then, of course, you know, because it's out because I was doing something for uh, doing something else for another one of our Benton friends. I I happen to bring this out. This is my this is my personal my part of my no PC, big deal. My personal coffee, you know, no big deal. No big Since deal. we were talking about the original, the, the X Men we should have is the X Men team. So that's Trevor. Uh, Travis. Travis, you told to, told me that that was like a pretty low grade one. It looks great. I mean, I guess over through the screen, it's really hard to tell. But well, I mean, you've got some, you know, you got some wear on the spine, a lot of wear on the spine, you take and, uh, and, court, and a couple ticks, and there's a couple little tears on it. But you know, I mean, otherwise, it's, I mean, it's low grade. What I mean, low grade is three is a low grade to me. So great book. Beautiful. Trav, can I ask on that Wolverine one? Yes. Um, does that cover have anything to do with the story of that oh. book? Or oh, yeah. It, yeah, okay. Wolverine becomes the spirit of vengeance. It is awesome. I love that cover. I love that storyline. Him on the cover, I'm going to buy it. The, the other the cover of, of this is him on the motorcycle. I mean, when this stupid changed. stack here is from four weeks of them putting him yes. on stupid covers, and I, yes. I can't yes. resist them. I mean, I've the seen those, and that's why I wanted to ask. I I have all of them as well. That's why I wanted to ask because I had seen a bunch of different. That's my favorite one. Go back, go back to that. Let's go, go oh, to go to there. Okay. Let me start a bunch over. Of these Wolverine homage kind of cover swipe things going on my, and I wasn't sure my store knows the way to my wallet so they pick out all these wolverine covers and they're like yeah eric will say yeah he won't say no <laughs> we'll get them every single one i'm That's getting marvel's thinking in general too i'm sure yeah yeah, when they're curating their books to, for you to look at, that they know you. That's that's personally, awesome. yeah. That's yeah. Pretty cool. Oh, nice. Me yeah. all the way across. That is my favorite one, though. That, that one's, one's very cool. cool. Yeah, oh, that closer. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Is that Thor Silver Surfer? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Can you show, can you show that, that last one, the red one, uh, just like a, closer to the camera? Avengers yeah. 67. That's very cool. <laughs> 
I love the fact that we have what looks like the baby Wolverine X baby Wolverine is one of the <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah that's like, right? that's a Scotty yeah. Young version yeah this one's cool yeah. I like this, this one, one is awesome amazing love that. man these are dope yeah pretty- I don't know what what is that one that's the one I couldn't figure out I don't know what that is is it is it a Black Panther cover I, I think, mean it is Black I Panther it is. It is Black Panther but what book is it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The original Black Panther cover that is that, awesome. or is it a Nick Fury? Oh, maybe like Agents of Shield. Uh, kind of looks like a Frank Miller Daredevil a little bit too. Oh, that's gonna drive yeah. me If anybody in the chat knows, uh, let us know. We um, all know what this one is. Yeah. And this was there like a, was there some kind of purpose to this? Like it's for his uh, birthday, fifty years. Wolverine's fiftieth. Yeah. Okay. The America one is that one's awesome very cool too. too. Yeah. That one's fun. Yeah. All the Wolverines in the background. Oh, wow. So does I don't that know mean why it? this was on Doctor yeah, Strange, but this, they kind of missed, I think, missed the mark on that one. Are you saying that every book that came out that week? Like they had had Wolverine Marvel, Marvel. Well, I think they did four a week, had a variant cover with him on it. They it wasn't just four a week, it was actually almost every title. There were Pretty a few much, titles yeah. that didn't. Yeah, like, there were a few titles that didn't happen. It was almost every title. Pretty cool. Well, those are all awesome. Eric. I might have to do a video of all these or something. Yeah, th- those yeah. are yeah. Awesome. done. I don't know when they're done. Yeah, I did an unboxing that had a bunch of them in it, and so and then I did a new comic book week two weeks ago. Had some in it. I haven't had a new comic book week yet because I haven't really got my new comics because of the weather. So, were you? But, <laughs> But yeah, I was done. I, I just those are the four books I wanted to show. That the, the uh, I, I wanted to throw out that uh, my my oh, not my oldest X Men, but definitely one of the ones that uh, I kind of cherish. This was a Christmas gift last year for my wife. So. Me too. I got mine last year. That's awesome. Noise. I nominate Chris. Chris. Me. Well, I had some. Uh, my birthday was a couple weeks ago, so I had some excuses to buy a bunch of stuff last couple oh, of weeks. Beauty. You know? So I got this. That's oh. awesome. It's awesome. You know, nice. you know? Can't go wrong. Um, a non-comic thing, but it's something I've gotten more into in a childish way. I don't want to learn anything. I want to stay dumb about them. I don't want to know everything, but I got this uh, comic or this card binder from the oh, 90s. Great. Very cool. I need that. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, <laughs> must got all my. I must have. Homework. That's cool. You know, oh. got my uh, Jim Lee set. Jim I just completed Lee's. it. Yes. Love that set. And I'm purposely not learning anything. I don't want to learn. I don't want to know anything. I, I look at pretty pictures. It, you know, so I just got the. Um, oh, wait. Here's my boy. The villain's page is Magneto. Oh, nice. nice. And it didn't that, was, that was exactly the same picture I was thinking of when I saw your shirt. That's not the same Jim Lee drawing, though, is it, on your shirt? Yeah, I think it is, actually. It is. Oh, sick. There it is. So good. Um, and I got this at a flea market. I got these cards at a flea market, <laughs> um, but they didn't have the holograms. So I've been slowly collecting the, uh, the holograms, and I just got the fifth one. So nice. now I got a full set, which is sweet. Um, and those are my cards, like a little dork. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> Nerd! um, and then the big book I got for um, my birthday is one I've never had. I've never even held it as a buyer Ooh. or a seller, but there I it got is. The, um, there it is. Seven O Club. Well, the Seven O Club. Wow. Um, it's, really, here. I'm not it. it's really nice. It's, and what's you know what's cool about this is, like I said, I've never, yeah, I've never yeah. held it before. Never had it. Um, I'm not always a fan of custom labels. There we go. There's a screenshot. <laughs> There's a thumbnail, Ryan. Um, no, I gotta go get it. Go get it. <laughs> get <over there. laughs> I should have put it in the group chat. Like, get your ninety fours ready. Um, there you go. But I don't always. I don't know how you guys feel about the custom label. I don't always like it, but I, I, I definitely. I think like it fits how it works. works. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great one. Yeah, I, like, yeah. I really like the 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 Spider Man one. Okay, Brian. Yeah. So, I was really happy about it because I got giant size um, for my big 
my big X keys to knock out. This was the besides number one um, and and Hulk one eighty one. This was probably the third biggest one I don't have. So now that I have this, my my last two big ones are Hulk one eighty one and X Men one. So maybe by the time I'm mm. 40, 45, 50, we'll <laughs> knock those out. So it's still coming down to price, man. You get you can choose your time. I, well, I'm trying. I want it this year, Mike, because I'm like. Uh, it's all low. It's it's a buy it I've been on eBay so, with that in the search just every day. I'm like, okay, did they go down yet? Did they go down yet? <laughs> well, and I keep debating about, you know, it's like I want a Hulk 181, and I've kind of debated about um, getting like a green label or not or getting one without the stamp, and I keep kind of going back and forth if it – I don't know if it will always bother me, so – I'm not I really didn't sure. need to derail the conversation, but that's exactly that's something that I'm thinking of about too. Or as far as like the Hulk 181, I'm having trouble because this is a book that I, it's a my grail. You know, it's I a had big to own it. I always wanted one. I'm gonna own one, but I f battle with the idea of spending fair market value for one because they are so um, prevalent. They're everywhere, right? Yeah. yeah. And so I feel like sometime I'm gonna get lucky. And and get it somehow that way, and that's going to be the most exciting way to get one. That's all but then again, will that ever happen? You know, it's like everybody dreams of that moment. I'm yeah, like, like you, how you found yours, Mike. It was just yeah. it happened to be in that box. I, I think that's yeah. one of the greatest ways. Yes, but, serendipitously getting it is the. Is although the I have found X Men ones, I've seen I couldn't get them, but like an X Men one is so much rare. I mean, they're still out there, but it's so much less likely than a giant than a Hulk yeah, one. Yeah, scarce. Yeah, but that's why if you are like. As you were saying, Chris, like if you have to pull the trigger on one, get the X Men. Like that's the one you get first. Get the big book first, and then back because there are a ton of Hulk one eighty ones out there. I missed. There. I was. I had the worst experience last spring. I missed an X Men one. An old lady about forty minutes away from me posted an X Men one on Facebook at like eleven p.m. at night, and I was like, oh, 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 "Is it still available?" And I waited. I couldn't sleep that night. She got back to me. Oh, the yeah, next I was gonna day. say you're not gonna be able to sleep. Yeah, I was like, I can't sleep. I thought I think it was it was fifteen hundred bucks, and that's what she wanted. Oh, and it was probably like a fair. And she had said there was a couple coupons cut out, but it was her husband's from the sixties. And I waited and waited, and then she got back to me in the morning. She's like, "Oh, thanks so much." I'm just putting an old lady voice. <laughs> ancient. Oh, you're, you're, I'm sorry, but you're number two. I got some guy coming today. I was like, you don't want to sell it to him. You want to sell it yeah. to me. I'm right <laughs> Do I? Can I tell the story? I don't want to. I'm going to tell a, a quick four minute story, and it's worth. I know I've told this to Ryan before, but for those of you who haven't talked to about this, and maybe Dan has heard this. So I go out flea market yard sale hunting. Right, this was last spring, less than a year ago. For beginning of the year, it was like you know April or May. Right, I'm out there. Yard sales, nothing, 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 nothing all morning. I have no footage, whatever. I decided to go back a different way where I know there's lots of houses with uh, yard sales. And I drive by a house. It wasn't on, you know, it wasn't in like the ads or anything like that. I see a sign. I I was late getting home. I said, you know what? I, I got to check it out. I do a U-turn. I pull in and the driveway is full of stuff. Obviously, it's a yard sale and there's a woman there. And uh, I said, oh, what do you do with all this? Stuff? She's like, oh, we're moving. Uh, my mother-in-law's moving out. We're getting rid of it. Everything's free. Okay, so I got some like brand new skis for my wife. I got a bunch of stuff, like literally free. I don't know what tipped me off. I just always asked that, hey, by any chance, do you have any comic books? She's like, oh, my husband's really into comic books. I'm like, really? What kind? She's like, I think X-Men. I'm like, well, I really love X-Men. I'm a YouTuber. I love like, buy collections, whatever. And she's like, oh, yeah, well, he's, you know, he's, he's busy, but I'll ask him. I said, okay. And I left. And I said, that was stupid. I should have left my card or something. So I do a U-turn again. I drive a mile of the road, turn back around. This time, the guy <laughs> sitting in the driveway with her. And he goes, hey, we're hoping you come back. I was just yelling. Why didn't she get your your you know information? I'm like, I was mad I didn't leave it. He's like, I'm like, so what do you collect? He's like, I like most. I like X-Men. I'm like, well, which era do you collect? He's like, I collect all X-Men. I'm like, well, which ones do you have? He's like, I have all X-Men. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, I'm inside. <laughs> We go in the garage. He reaches up. He pulls down. He had X-Men 1 through 500, and that was it. No other title. Wow. He pulls out a three-ring binder. Three-ring binder. Opens it up. It's X-Men 1 through 50. Just laying in there. And he's like, yeah. He's like, this is, you know, if the house is burning down, I tell everyone to grab these first. I love it. He's like, I take them out and read them all the time. I was like, 
What? <laughs> and I, this is a mile from my house. I just randomly stopped by. And so he's like, yeah, if I ever decide to sell him. And he wasn't that old. He's probably like 50. He's like, if I decide to sell him, I'll, I'll let you know. I'm like, I'm like, dude, you understand? Like, this is what I want. Like, he had every single book, and this was like randomly on a random stop in the middle of nowhere in Western <laughs> Mass. And this guy had every X Men book ever. I could not believe it. I've never seen anything like it. Um, and I, he's got my number. Fingers crossed. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. What are the odds of that? You know, it's crazy. That's nuts. That is cool. Yeah. So, and and, and that, I mean, you're right, Mike. That. You know, the X-Men one, that is the most rare out of Giant Size or Hulk 181. Those are the big, you know, three books there. But I I think that kind of also shows that X-Men one isn't that rare, right? It, it, I mean, like I've said this about everything. They're it's out, out there. there. These collections are out there. Yeah, yeah it's there out is. there. It's a matter of because of its age and just finding one that's not just destroyed because of its age. That's That's the hard part right there. Yeah. It's rare and getting rarer, or rare-ish getting rarer, right? Yeah, so. yeah they're not making new ones. No. Right. Yeah, technically. Well, uh, <laughs> technically, they are. I, I have I oh, have three facsimiles. Yeah. Get on it, scammers. <laughs> remake the original, though. You, you can reprint yeah. it. But yeah. yeah. Um, Brian, you got yes. anything? Yeah. So who is the oldest X-Men, like, in comics? Like what? Who appeared Eight. first? Are you talking about mutant or X Men? No, like like this is a trick question. Well, so here's the prototype for Kitty Pride oh. from 1958 mm. by Very Marvel cool. Comics. And it, is that definitely <laughs> the prototype of Kitty Pride? Like they, that's what they stick? call it in the prize guide. The girl who walks through stone. Um. They call it Prototype Kitty Pride from 1958. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there's a lot of those prototype characters in the 50s. Yeah, but I mean, I'm trying to think. I'm like, is there another? There's no other prototype well, Namor. X-Men. Namor beats her. Namor's been an X-Men. So. Well, Namor's a mutant. Well, that was, that was retcon, but sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's. It, I was. Here's, like, uh, here's yeah, the, I knew bring this up, Ryan. I knew it. I was about well, to say. No, because you're talking about putting your phone number out there. This is like this guy called me up like two years later to get me this. So. Yep. Or fake. Yeah. <laughs> fake. <laughs> That's they they, they knew it was valuable. They put 14 cents on this book when it was 12 oh. cents. I hear technically a collectible is anything that you can resell for more the, of the value than the face value, right? So at that point, that was, was, that was collectible. <laughs> Here's a Stan Lee autographed X Men number fifty one. Ooh, yeah, yep, killer. Is that Neil Adams? That's Neil Adams, right? Uh, yeah, so. yeah. It's his I know that's uh, that's no. Starenko actually. That's Starenko. Oh, that's Starenko. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Mm. Yeah. No, well, yeah. Neil is after one, is five, after nine. Barry Windsor Smith, and that that was. And then this was this guy movie. that this guy that is hosting this show gave me this for Christmas. That's Barry, Barry, Barry Windsor Smith. Smith. Yeah. First, first Barry Windsor Smith, Smith of Marvel. Yeah. I, I think it's actually his first in comics. I don't think he actually is. did any other comics okay. before that. Oh wow. And then uh, we got this one from Dan. This is a cool one. Nice. Oh yeah, nice, nice. And one other thing, since you showed uh, what was it, two hundred one? Here we go. Here's first cable. Uh, I don't know if you can see it's signed by Lifefell yeah. up there across the logo. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. Here's my, here's my Mia Culpa. I don't have this first first print of this book. You have the gold one. Uh, which I have a thousand of the gold one, but yeah. I did never. <laughs> Took the time to get the eighty-seven right at first. Ah, uh, you'll find it. I have faith. I know. I know. I just don't care. I guess. <laughs> there you go. It's actually just shocking that you great, don't. Great books. Love it. Love it. All right. What do you got? All right. Wow. So I got. Uh, I just kind of like pulled out some of my obscure stuff. Um, this isn't necessarily obscure, but this is X Men 2099 number one, but it's signed by uh Ron Lim and Andy Kubert. Mm, cool, cool. 
it, We'd love I read to see that series start to finish when I was a kid when it came out, man. I love that series. Scoop this up on a whatnot sale comics journal. It's got awesome. I love that picture. Uh, my awesome. top, it's got my top three favorite X Men on the cover. Chilling, awesome. awesome. In oh, order, I don't have that. Damn, you guys. Where's my YouTube again? That's I mean, right. I'm on eBay right now. <laughs> who's the, who's the artist? Oh, no. <laughs> that's that's John Byrne too. Yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. It's John Byrne. Show me, show me again, please. Does it say it's John yeah, Byrne? I'm gonna take a picture of it. No, no, that no, looks like John Byrne. Yeah, Are that's a face gives it away. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, you're right. That was my next, my ex quest, my ex guess. Ah, oh, not quick enough. This is just some random magazine stuff, poster books that I got. 151, Mike. Get in the replay. I know. I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> well, I'm trying. I want it now. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Poster yeah. magazine. That's of, awesome. I remember those. I got a Ghostwriter one like that, but I've never seen that one. And so this isn't necessarily like a cool collectible item. I mean, I guess it's kind of, but um, I've never shown this. And this is actually has a big part in me being an X-Men fan. This is an ultimate X-Men wow. encyclopedia. That's cool. And wow. having not been a, a reader as a kid, this is... One of the, and I mean, I didn't get this when I was super young. I got this kind of year 2000, but um, this has kind of introduced me to a lot of obscure characters. Um, I remember that publisher because didn't they do a lot of Star Wars books too, like that? Oh, uh, I think they do all kinds of books, Legos, like, and yeah, hey, all that. yeah I have they, a Superman and a Spider Man from them. They do uh, all kinds Dang. of stuff, but like I might need that. It's awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. Art and information about all the different characters and yeah, that's a great like coffee yeah. table book. Yeah, it's exactly what it so is. See those books. Those books were always at Costco. And I got, oh, I, I got. Yeah. So this was my first one, and then I also got a Marvel, a full Marvel Universe one years later. Cool. So I have that one too. I think my... they're Amita Junior oh. homage. It's on my hard, uh, my hardcover omnibus shelf over behind me. So, killer! I'm so literally buying that book right now. By the way, <laughs> I see you on your phone, right? I have to. I have to. Was it the first cable or, or the? No, no, the uh, the comics uh, journal. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super cool. <laughs> so we, well, we get each other to spend money. It's great. That's the dangerous thing of these shows. We all start writing a list of ones that we don't have that we need to go find. Yeah, I have one more, right. Ryan. Don't mind, only because the yeah, no, no, please. Sorry, uh, only because I so show coming out on Monday. Uh, I'm preview for anyone who watched my channel. I'll show you one of the books I got. I went to a comic warehouse. Um, I didn't have this book either. So as an X Men completionist, had to have it. Uh, always wanted it, and I finally fell into my lap. Really cheap. So. Uh, Awesome. But when I didn't know about it, you know, obviously he's gray. When did he turn blue? The answer is he didn't actually turn blue. Do you guys ever hear this? There you go. Uh, do you ever hear this? He actually, um, a little bit after this, he turned black in a fight with uh, Quasimodo. And then you guys know you can't just ink something completely black. You have to fill it in the color in the printing process. So if you think of like Superman's hair or Colossus's hair, they fill it in blue. That's what they yeah. did with the Beast. He was technically black, but they just kept filling him in with more and more blue or inking him less until finally they're just like, he's blue. And they just went with it. <laughs> like the Avengers title. So he wasn't intended to be blue. It's just it's one of those kind of like the Green Hulk, right? He was gray. Yeah, gray, I was but... just gonna say. I wonder if it had something yeah. to do with gr printing grays. Like grays well, apparently were. I actually like him like this better because there's too many blue X Men there. I'm saying that. This, I mean, you got a million blue X Men. So uh, I actually liked him gray. So he I does look that. awesome on that cover in gray. It's uh, it's a it's really cool. cool book. It is a cool book. So um, you know, before we wrap up, just want to open the floor anything any last items any loose ends we haven't covered tonight of course you know we could keep talking talk talking but we've got to save stuff for future episodes just want to uh but if there's anything pressing 
speak now or forever hold your peace. Yes. Until, or until the next the next episode. <laughs> can we can we do a quick round and everybody tell us what they are either X Men, whether it's collecting what you're what you're going after or what you're trying to read or what you're trying to create. You know, what kind of X Men thing are you doing planned? For I'll the, start. For, for the near for me, it's, for me, it's um, collecting comics, and I'm trying to get upgrades for the run that I love, which is the John Byrne, Dave Cockrum um, run of X Men. So basically, get upgrades to try to get uh, like around eight or nine, you know, very fine, very fine near mint copies of those. Um, eventually, that's that's what I'm going for. Eight or nine of each one. Uh, not eight or nine copies, though. I do love my <laughs> duplicates, and I know that that would be the default yeah. guess. Um, no, like the grade, the grade. But I would oh, eight, also eight like or nine. Got it. Oh. Eight or nine. So very fine, very fine near mint. That's kind of the grade I'm trying to get every one of those issues in. But I would accept like a slightly lower grade if there's something unique about it, like you know a price variant or. I don't know, double cover or just something, something around like that. Yeah. You know? Cool. Hmm. Very cool. Eric. Well, I think I'm an audio like Dan's talking about those grades. I don't care about grades. I mean, as long as it's not literally falling apart in your hands, I'm okay with that. Um, I think what I am going for now and it's, Something that got me back into the comics uh, was completing my X-Men run. So I am still working on my Claremont run. This is one of the things that's kind of an ongoing thing. I need two more. Two more. 109, 112. I cannot find these in the wild anywhere in my area, and I'm trying so hard to resist going to eBay or something online. Sure. Um, other than that, um, I think just... There's a lot of runs that I never kind of exposed myself to in the 70s and 80s. So that's kind of what I'm, I've been chasing. Uh, like today, I just got a huge chunk of um, the 70s Marvel monsters like Dracula. I think I got like 25% of that series left now because I just found a huge stack today. Uh, Frankenstein's monster, I found a huge stack of that today. And then other than that, I started picking up like Defenders because it's one of those series that interests me that has so many different like almost solo superheroes and they just threw them together. Dan, oh my God. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> it's killing me. Um, so that's kind of the things I've been doing uh, is just visiting these series that when I was younger, I never really even gave them a thought of. But now it's like I'm kind of revisiting them. Uh, just whether it's because of the art, uh, the writing, I really liked the writing back then where you had a lot of storylines that were, if not just one issue, maybe two or three, and that was it. And then, you know, you're done with the storyline. So that's kind of what I've been doing lately. Travis. You're muted. You're muted. He's a mutant. You're muted. We can't hear you call him a mutie? That's a bad word. I am a mutie. I mean, <laughs> muted. That's right. <laughs> Here, uh, go ahead and show my screen. Make it big real quick. I want to show one thing real quick. Because, right. you know, we were talking about this, and I think it's, you I'm, know, I'm since gonna... Mike is, you know, the, I thought everyone would want to know that Peach Momoko is going to be creating the new X-Men title. Yeah. Um, so that is the, that that is what the, that is the perceived cover, I guess. Um, is she also writing or just, she's just doing the writing? Whole... Yeah, she's doing the she's whole doing thing. doing the whole series? Yeah, I mean, here's the here's the write up or a little bit of the write up if it can be in focus. But yeah, she's writing and art, and then there's a bunch of variant covers, of course, coming out. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like it's. Uh, I mean, that looks like Dazzler to me. And uh, I don't know. It's gonna. It, Armor is an interesting character. I like Armor. She's a uh, one of those characters that uh, was in uh, that all female X Men team. That was pretty cool too. Um, I. Uh, for me, I you know, I'm drawing X Men actually. I'm not drawing it for Marvel, but I'm, I've been adding 
little bits of X-Men here, there, and certain uh, stuff that some work I'm working on. And, um, and uh, you know, I think collecting wise, um, I'm going to see how, uh, how House of X, Fall of X goes. I mean, Fall of X, Rise of X goes. Um, if it goes good, I might, uh, I might pick up whatever the new thing is that comes out with that. And then um, for X-Men, um, Uncanny, one thing I'm wanting to get is um, uh, right now Giant Size X-Men at number one is outside of my range. I'm not even going to think about that. Uh, but I have a 94. I have a 97. I kind of would like to get a, a 95, a 96, a 98, a 99, and a 100. Those are kind of would be the would be kind of like where I would go for, for when it comes to X-Men this year. Those are the books that uh, I don't have, and um, and it would be kind of cool to start building that. Yeah, there's there's I've had that one. <laughs> Travis, would That's you good. sell a, big like one. a coverless yeah. copy of um, Giant Size, something like that? Yeah, I mean the thing is, is it's it's you know they they right now they they they're all so they haven't come down enough yet, and that's that's my thing. Now I mean depending on what how well the rest of my sales go on eBay and such over the next month or so or two, maybe it could be a birthday present this year. Well, my kind of my birthday present is actually going to a, a, a terrific con, so that's uh, right. that's kind of birthday present. Yeah, that's my number one goal too. So. So, uh, but generally speaking, uh, you know, I, I happen, I, I know there's a piece that I'm drawing that has a, that has a Wolverine on the cover. That's uh, it's pretty sweet. I like Wolverine a lot. So can't wait to get that finished and get that off to the person that it's going to. So, 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 Chris, yeah. Mike, Brian. Yeah. So, um, Mine's pretty straightforward. Um, <clears throat> I finished my Claremont run, uh, you know, a few weeks ago. So the choices are now, do I want to go for one through 66? Probably. Um, but I want to start with the big ones. You know, my my eyes are on the big ones. Uh, X-Men 1, X-Men 4. So um, and it's on X-Men book. But Daredevil number one's in there somewhere. But yeah, they're high on my list. Um, but for me, you know, I'm not chasing the book. I'm chasing the story. Because I could just buy it. Right, right. I could just go get one, right? But it's yeah. how you get the book. Like that guy found it down the street. That's where I told you. Like, if I get it from him, that's a story. Like, there's more meaning there. The books I just bought outright, I don't even make videos about them because I don't I feel dead inside. It needs to be the story. I am chasing X-Men One, but I'm chasing the story of getting X-Men One more than the book. So that's it's my like goal. That's, cool. That story you said, Mike, about the Ghost Rider. You know, you kind of just sure. fell into it and it didn't really mean anything, Nothing. right? No, it's just, I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. yeah. I say it's like getting the uh, the ice cream sundae. The the hunt is the ice cream. The comic's the cherry on top. And the maraschino cherry's good, but I feel a little empty inside. I wish I had the whole sundae, so. I, I love that. I love that a ton. I I agree. I, I, I'm chasing a couple, I'm chasing some books from a friend's mom right now because she's having me grade them and, I, and, and she's not letting me make an offer. Uh, and so I'm like, I know they want to sell them. I know they want they want some they want some cash for it. It's just it's one of those things. And I think I've shown a couple of the books in shorts, and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna nix that, and I think I'm gonna do a whole video of what of the process of my mm -hmm. how I grade and and all that stuff. I think that'll be a lot of fun to yeah. do. And so that'd be fun to watch. Yeah, I think next week I'm actually gonna be doing some more of it with them. So it'll be kind of it'll be cool. I'll be able to record. So. I love the idea of chasing the story. That's actually a lot more the process of doing this stuff. The process of finding stuff and hunting stuff is is a lot more fun. I mean, yeah. I hate to interrupt. I'm gonna tell one really quick story. I was at the comic shop this week. Uh, I was I was hunting a book for a friend, um, uh, a, a Dave Stevens book. Um, in fact, uh, uh, last Dave Stevens art. So I was digging, I was digging through some stuff and I was talking to Chris about it and we went, we both went, we're like, look, and he was helping me look for it. And, and then he's like, he pulls it up on, on, uh, on my comic shop and it's the only issue that my comic shop doesn't have, which tells me that it's a hard book to find. And, um, yeah, I have, that's funny. You, you just showed that, that book. That's, that's really funny, Brian. It's really funny, Brian, because. There, there's the Dave Stevens book right there. You know, right there. 
Wait, that's, that's really not cool the background, number, right? No, that's not it. That is not it. Okay. No, no, no. It, this is Bad Planet number six. So, um, anyway. cool. and so I started hunting for it, and I went through I went through six long boxes of of, of fifty cent comics and didn't find it. So, mm. but that was part of it. And looked in, then I went through the fifty cent the fifty percent off boxes too. So, but that's what the was the title that, on that one? Bad Planet. Oh, that, yeah, it's bad sign, right. right? It's like image book, right? Image book from 2005. Sweet. Right. So anyway, so uh, the story, that's the best part about it, the hunt. That's so much, I, I enjoy the hunt. I, you know, if I don't find it, that's okay. I mean, if it if it comes up and it, it's there the next time around, that's great. And then that, that's the best part. I really enjoy that. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to doing that with, with friends this summer. So it'll be cool. Yeah, fun. Brian, Chris, Sorry. goals, things you're trying to achieve. X Men. I'm uh, working on my burn, my burn Claremont run, finishing that up. Um, also, my big goals this year are focusing on major keys, so uh, GSX and X Men '94, big ones that I want to get, uh, as well as um, you know, there's a lot of other non X Men keys that I want to pick up. So my first one I got the other day was the first Wasp. So yeah, Killer Wasp is cool. That's awesome. That are you gonna get, really awesome. Oh, Brian, are you going to get that um, Batman graded? That Batman one inch? Yes, yes actually. Um, right? I'm talking to uh, uh, Ryan over at Automatic Comics, and he says that he thinks it could be top of census, and if it's a top of census book, it's a $10,000 book. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So... Not bad for two hundred bucks. <laughs> no, not at all. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Chris, you're up. Um, yeah. So for me, you know, I don't collect runs. I don't have. I. I I'm trying to. Um, I'm trying something different this year, and I'm trying to um, restrain. My folk, I'm trying to hyper focus on six books. Um, and I'm trying to, I'm living like a monk, not getting everything I want. So, um, I'm trying restraint this year. Um, maybe I don't know. I got sober a year ago, I was like a 15 year pot smoker, so I got sober a year ago. So, I'm like, I think I'm more mentally strong now, I think I can actually do this. So I just, um, like I, I said it before, the only two X-Men books I'm focused on are Hulk 180 and Hulk 182 or Hulk 181. Um, and I'm just kind of caught, uh, I'm, I'm just caught about the Marvel value stamp. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I, Cause I can, you can get one. There was one on eBay. It was a five, five. I would crack it out of a green label case. But there was a five, five without the stamp that sold for 1500 bucks. Oh, wow. It was beautiful, and I was like, wow, "I'd love looking at it," yep. but would I always know there's something missing? Yeah. You know, because I've also done the same thing with like to Dan's point and Mike's point, where it's like, "Well, I'll find it someday." Well, I'll find it here. Well, well, guess what? I've never found it. <laughs> it's never found me, and I'm like, I think I'm just tired of. This is the year where I just said, I think I'm just going to, I'm tired of it and I want to get it. Um, That's valid. You yeah, know, pull that trigger. Yeah. I, I've waited 20 years. I'm still waiting. I'm like a girl on prom night. My date's not picking me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm taking myself. I'm damn still it. Yeah. at home waiting. Great um, analogy. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm really, I'm really focused on that. And for me, I, you know, it is a, even at 1500, it's like, I'm not, you know, I sell comics, I'm not rich. Um, so I have to like sell my, I sell my PC. I like skin stuff out of my PC and I roll that into a bigger book. So I'm kind of just focused on those two for the X-Men. Um, I'd like a, you know, like a Batman Adventures 12 or an FF 48 too, but really the first two I want are the Hulks because I'm worried that I don't think the market's really going to be affected by the Deadpool movie at this point. Um, so I was kind of running against the clock, but 
there's so many that I see online that, that you know, they're just, they're not moving. They're, they're, yeah. There's a lot of them out there that eventually, I think that price has to come down more if, you know, these sellers want to sell them. So. Okay, see, the council should advise, I have you all here, your cap. Yes. Does the Marvel value stamp not being there, does that personally bother you? For a big book like that, I think yes. so. Yeah, I'm more bothered that CGC puts a green label like that's just the principle of it. They hurt themselves, really. I what mean, if it was out of the it, it's out of the case, but you know it's gone? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I don't care. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't if, if it was graded, I care because I don't like the green label, like it's a stigma yeah. attached to it. But if, like, if you can get one cheap, if you like it, that's fine. And I like to point this out, guys. The but not, you can have a page cut out of a book, like or ripped out, and you won't get a green label, right? But the fact that the comic book was used as intended, that kills me, right? And that's a green label for stigma. They wanted you to cut it out. So for me, from a character standpoint, I think it has a lot of character. A kid cut that out back in 1974. You know what I mean? That's cool. There's a that's cool true. thing about that if you can wrap your mind around the fact that people in general don't hold it as a higher as high of a pedigree. But if you want that book, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. And Chris, I think I saw I saw a how-to video for you about that five-five situation on YouTube, or it's like a heat gun uh, and a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it's a stupid policy, but as somebody like I want my big books graded, so it would bother me to have the green or purple label on a book. Um, but I do agree with Mike that it's pretty stupid. Uh, the purple I, label, yeah. I think, up to a point, you 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 got to uh, be upset about it, and then at some point, with the expense of the book, you've got to take into account your financial situation and whether you're going <laughs> to be agree. able to afford a blue label. You know, I, I agree. So, it's all it's all relative to your own personal um, yeah. means and whatnot. I think and where it, I'm at is is like I can afford kind of like a mid grade green label that looks gorgeous or i can afford like a lower 2530 but it's blue but it looks like shit chris think, would you consider a cbcs because you'll get a lower grade because I they don't, don't give the green label they just knock the grade down it'll still be blue label yeah i hadn't thought of that honestly and their new and their new labels are sick I, yeah I they are they're nice yeah no you, that's you, actually you, a good you, idea you, mike because putting it in cbcs is like a prison it's a money prison and even right. if you get the old label, you could always reholder it for the new label if you're that. Anal yeah, I think, I don't I think, think that's going to change. By the way, I don't think CVCS is going to be the uh, the redheaded stepchild of this of the uh, of the grading market for yeah. much longer. Especially after, I mean, CGC kind of that that what happened this last this last year has just been that was horrendous. I mean, it was completely unethical and horrendous and. I think CBCS really what they they did smart marketing when just just last week when they came out and said, "Hey, look, tamper-proof case." Right. I mean, yeah. tamper-proof case. That that was the that marketing right there plus the new what, the new labels look. Well, look CGC sweet. responds. They lowered prices. You know, like they they see they know the blood's yeah. in the water and yeah. that yeah. is coming for them. So. I don't think yeah. they're going. I mean, you're well, going to save a little money when you get that. competition so. is good for all of us as collectors. Yeah. Right? So it is. Is. It is. Small four. So I, I, I'll, I'll break some news here. Uh, I was on the phone with Ryan from Automatic earlier today, and he was looking up some stuff. And he goes, "When did that happen?" I go, "What?" He goes, "Oh my God." When they just when they updated CGC last time, they got rid of the cap on the unlimited value tier. It used to be they would take a max five thousand dollars. He's like, it's gone. So like, if you submit a, a, a Superman number one, you're going to give them thirty five thousand dollars for grading that book. <laughs> That's why yeah. everything's lower. <laughs> That's Who why they lowered the price. Yeah, yeah. It used to be five thousand dollar cap maximum on on uh, the high value books and wow. now it's so gone the cap is gone um, so it's like anything giant you're going to pay a giant fee mm. Mm. chris mm. i would say about back to your your marvel value stamp the yeah. it's going to matter the most to you because when you show us a book whether it's low grade whether it's missing the stamp or not we're all going to be like that is fucking cool and and that's how we're going to feel about it and I think that how you are going to feel in the long run about it is what really matters. I think yeah. to me, like I really, you know, the the cover's so iconic 
you know, that the lower grades, sometimes they have stains or Tommy wrote his name on it or there's pieces missing out or they blacked out teeth or like, that, <laughs> that stuff bothers me more, right. you know, because that's what's up on the wall. I'm not like I'm not leaving it open on the Marvel value page on my desk, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leave the Marvel value stamp. You know, you don't want the Tommy edition. And I think, and you can go buy a Sheena Warrior Marvel value stamp. Yeah, and then just kind of like, just kind of like place Tape it in there. there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, and it's too bad um, Sasquatch didn't come on because he has an X Men number one. He wanted to finish his X Men run. Restoration. That book, he got a green label. It it's missing a page or two. Um, it's he got it wicked he got it com comparatively wicked cheap it presents amazing literally literally sasquatch is my inspiration from watching the oh, collector video you know because that. i i was like i never thought of that and i he he has it i don't have it and he's happy know? he's completely happy and he honestly he asked a lot of people before he bought it including me and i was like i don't know man like you know is that gonna long term is that gonna bother he's like i don't think so i just want to i just want to get it but once he had it i was like dude you got it you can, you can say you have one and yeah. it looks great, and he's happy. And, you know, he kind of changed my mind on it. I'm like, yeah, heck yeah. If you're happy yeah. with it, you finish your, you get your goal, man. You go get it. And my other yeah. thought, too, is, like, I'd get it, and if I get an upgrade, great. But then, I, you know, I yeah. sell the, the first one, and exactly. I get an upgrade, and, you know, it's a win-win. So when that one yeah. finds me, when it picks me up, I'll you be sell it to me. Out. You sell it to me. Exactly. You sell yeah, exactly. It's going to be in a it's going to be in a slab, right? So, I mean, are you, you're not going to be able to even look at it and know that the value stamp is gone. It's in a slab. It's a trading card now. Yeah. So. Very <laughs> so. big trading card. Yeah. Thank you for your wisdom. Wise, trading wise counsel. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Counsel has spoken. Thank you. <laughs> the, it's like, yeah, yeah, it yeah. is decided. Yeah. <laughs> Adjourned. <laughs> um, to uh, wrap things up, I'll just mention what I'm working on, uh, which is very much ex almost my entire collecting this year is kind of in and around, or my even my just my comic um, hobby is is around X Men this year. My number one goal, X Men one. Um, I want to nail it down. I agree with you, Mike. Like I, I wish I could. I wish I could buy one with a story. The problem is, I think I'm never going to find one in the wild with a story. Like it, it's just not going to happen. And um, not with buying that. it at a buying buying it at a, <laughs> what did you say? Not with it's that. Not with that attitude. Uh, your, your story <laughs> could be terrific on. Your story could be terrific we'll on. See. I got it it's, terrific on with all my I, friends. Know, there's a lot of factors with me <laughs> buying it from the U.S. because. Um, you can trade a trade on it. Is you can carry it in your pants. You know, it, yeah. you decide yeah, what you I don't want to say it's impossible. I'm just saying, if I find a good deal somewhere, I, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to try and get it. eBay uh, can be a story. You never know. Yeah, I'll find a way to make it a story. But um, <laughs> X Men One's definitely my my goal, and uh, nice. beyond that, it's just kind of doing a little bit of the same thing Dan's doing, which is upgrading here and there, my X-Men runs. Uh, and then I, I'm, I'm trying to read more. I'm, I'm trying to get, uh, get to the end of uh, basically Jim Lee nineties, all that stuff. And then from there decide, do I just keep reading into the nineties or do I try to focus on current stuff? I, I don't know, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll read that. I'll reach that uh, that sooner rather than later. I have two omnibuses to read, and then I'll then then it's kind of figuring it out from there. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much my my ex. Oh, and I want to buy I want to buy a statue this year. I'd really like to get a. Colossus Let me guess which character. Right it's gonna be tough. We gotta think about this one. So which there's a sick one <laughs> coming out from Sideshow. Yes, yeah. I was gonna ask. Is this all all one? That is oh, awesome. Yeah. And uh, I'm on the wait list for it. Uh, it, it if it comes out, I'm probably going to get it. My my Grail statue is this XM Studio one with Colossus. He's got like he, he's got this um, I don't know like metal corded 
thing attached to a sentinel eyeball but like the detail in it is so so mm -hmm. good um but the only one i've i've ever seen for sale is on ebay for like four four grand um oh. and wow. and then shipping from china so it's shipping that heavy thing from china so that's not an option but one day i'd love to get that that statue but uh yeah that's you reminded me yes. of one more goal, Ryan. I want to get the one up X Men game uh, behind you. That's all. Oh, yes. I need to have that. Oh, man. It's so good. So it's cool. so fun. Terrific. Oh, we're going to play that to death, right? We're going to beat that game with a bag full of quarters. Well, we're going to play the OG <laughs> original one with yes, the six one. player, the double screen. With yeah, we are definitely going to get one you saw, Chris. 100%. Yeah, you got to come to Madison and play the. the Big oh, ball. that was yes, so that's cool. On a, that's a bucket list item, too. I want to. Yeah. Play. That's so cool. Um, so anyways, I uh, I just want to thank everybody for coming on the first Council of X. Thank, thank you, you for Professor. everybody who's been watching in the chat. We've been consistently over 20 people watching all night, which Ooh. is awesome. Wow. Nice. And uh, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. I can't wait to keep doing this. Uh, we'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Uh, it'll probably be a Monday but I'm not sure what the date is. Yeah, I gotta talk to all the guys here. Well, kind of forever, um, right? Yeah, yeah, I was like, you gotta make sure it's <laughs> uh, and uh I uh declare this session closed. Oh, oh. <laughs> see you guys next time. See ya.